we're not talking, you know. But you don't want to do too much on a PowerPoint. So, <laughs> so, um, and fortunately, and, and we'll get to this in a moment as we talk about kind of some of our partnerships, but uh, John is familiar with some of this work already um, as we've met with him and we are um, employing an MB intern for the duration of the semester through the Bell and Run to help us with some of this work. And um, as I mentioned, <coughs> there, are, there are some sort of low-hanging fruit items that we have decided to tackle really immediately this year. Um, our post-race food. Um, show of hands, who's done the event, participated in the event, been part of, I know, not right in, right in, your, in your hood there. Um, so, it. yeah, <laughs> which is awesome. So as, as you know then, our post-race food comes in that Festival Foods plastic bag and has for um, a number of years just for ease. We used to work with the folks at Aspiro to package that up and um, really easy, really <coughs> convenient. Here's your banana, here's your bagel, here's your pretzels. All of that. Um, that's obviously a huge one, right? Um, last year we did have the festival foods, bags to benches, recycling um, on site, but it's it's not the same as not having that waste in the first place. So we're getting rid of that. Um, we're not doing any bags. That food will be a la carte. We're going to offer one less item, and um, that will be a, a big impact right there again as, as we're talking about 10,000 participants. Um, that will also apply to our pre race spaghetti dinner. Currently, you get your little you know, your peppers and your Parmesan and your, your flatware in a plastic bag, we're gonna be getting rid of that as well. So those are hopefully two big <coughs> impacts right there. Um, increasing and improving our recycling efforts and thanks to the suggestion of John and the work of, of his intern Carly, or our intern through MB, um, Carly, we're really going to be, we're gonna be working with a local organization, Give a Damn really increase and improve our recycling efforts because as everybody knows those those efforts only go as far as the ability for that the recycling to remain uncontaminated and so we're going to be working with hopefully a team of volunteers to be there on race day to really be very visible um, kind of that bell and bell and run green team be sorting recycling telling people where to go there was an idea <coughs> depending on what we can do with composting to have someone in a banana suit to, this is where your banana peels go that kind of thing so really to ramp that up and to make that not only um, a, a more visible component of what we do but to really communicate that to our participants and one thing that Kelly doesn't know so with our corporate challenge which is about half of our participants you know reaching out to um, our area organizations our area companies and just in one um, kickoff it kind of mentioned what we're doing here and you know it's going to take a lot of manpower mm -hmm. and to make it really good so we had to give a damn associated bank said right away you know i said to them you guys your your uh, logo's green and you have lots of volunteers so they're going to mm -hmm. jump on to get a group um so that we can you know kind of band together to work on this but exactly and yeah. we have had some um volunteers from the astor neighborhood association in the past it sounds like we won't necessarily have that team this year, but we're going to be relying on Pastor East River neighborhood. Pastor East River, thank you, Ned, for the clarification. <laughs> a, a subtle but important distinction. Can I ask what you're looking at recycling? I mean so, uh, and that's and that's an excellent question. So we um, are going to be meeting with, and and I know you're Mark, right? With, yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we want to make sure that that those efforts are um, are. It's, it's yeah. as fruitful as they can be, I guess, and we're going to, we have a meeting set up with... Mo yeah, with Monday morning with Waste Management. Okay. To talk about exactly, and we, um, and one of our m delegated items for our intern was, was to connect with you and, and your folks, and I can make sure you have and, cards and, and contact Tell me you are with... I'm with Brown County. Uh, so, so Carly I'm and I talked today about her reaching out, our, our intern. Yeah, because Waste um, Management brings their stuff to us, right. and we set the rules for the... Brown ought to give you in Bago counties in terms of what's recyclable on, a, on that kind of basis. Yes. But there's a lot more that you can, there's a lot more stuff you can do with Yeah, and she was going to, yeah, and she was going to bring, <coughs> you know, the, the different, we're, we're going to gather the items and then we're also looking at like compostable cups and she has done the research. So she was going to bring that to your um, division to see, okay, what exactly can we do with these things once we gather them? So working with a couple different organizations, knowing that you know, we need to be checking all of our boxes all the way down the line. So trying to get as many of the experts in the field um, to, to be giving us feedback. And uh, you know, so we're understanding what we're supposed to be doing to make this. This is, 
Okay, yeah. great. That's yeah, good. The, the fact right. you're making an effort is okay. Huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we it's, see that. Really. Yeah, and as you know, we discussed in one of our initial meetings with John, it's it's all well and good for us to say oh, we're using compostable cups. Well, if you don't have a place to compo compost them, then that's not really very. Mm -hmm. That's 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 not really as effective as it could be. So we want to make sure that we're crossing our T's and dotting our eyes as far as those efforts are concerned. And and can you do? You know, like say compostable. Can you do recyclable water cups? Um, talking about our, our post race water, and that's a big area that's not on here because we are still trying to figure out what to do with that. As it is now, everybody gets a plastic water bottle. Obviously, we can recycle those, and that would be a part of our efforts. But again, the goal would be to have less of that, and maybe eventually down the road to go completely bottleless, yeah. plasticless at the end. We have looked into some, again with Carly's help, some. Um, aluminum type options. Um, no surprise to anybody in this room, though they're very expensive and not something that's really in our budget at this point. But if we are able to work with the right sponsors, you know, can we can we find somebody locally to sponsor that? If if, if I could suggest talk to Green Bay Botanical Gardens, um, they have been really making an effort to completely get rid of all their. You've got yeah. To so Carly, okay, met with them, and that's we. They sent us to. Um, a company because I know they're doing changing all to recycle to yep. aluminum, and so sh they connected us <coughs> with that company. So, and we did just hear back from them today on those estimates, and that's where yeah, we know. know that to to do that and make that effective, we're going to have to I find a sponsor for that work. Partially, we had a conversation last month about what's recyclable, what's not, and and this might be a good event to let people know. And even though it's been true for years, but people don't know about recycling water bottles you can leave the cap on and then the caps will get recycled too and this might be one of those events that like thousands of people can learn that at one time yeah and uh, not to like take this that's okay. offline but uh, is that a, is that uh, that's a great idea but i got sidetracked um is that monday morning meeting with waste management does it make sense to see if we can get that on your calendar as well and we can talk yeah. offline on that if it makes sense yeah, um like this monday yeah, like that's the 16th. 16th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, not. Yeah, I'm not available. I've got okay. Several things already on my calendar that day. Okay. We'll, I, we'll I, reconnect. We can talk. But we'll make yeah. sure. Digital, yeah. We can talk online too. It's easy that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank um, you. But that's that's an interesting thing. I didn't know. <coughs> I always take the caps off because I thought mm -hmm. that they weren't recyclable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then um, is so is aluminum I, I better than plastic? In terms of carbon footprint, I think it mm -hmm. is. Yeah, it's much more recyclable, recyclable and because that's you can kind recycle of aluminum all Yeah, but how much energy does it take to produce significantly aluminum? Significantly, significantly less than less. making it from. It's the it's the number of times the, the carbon footprint footprint for aluminum is lower than for plastic, just because it's recycled. plastic has a has a life uh, a limited life cycle. You can mm -hmm. only recycle plastic, you know, maybe a dozen times or so before it becomes too contaminated or the the molecular chain gets too degraded to be able to recycle it again. But aluminum, the the companies say the, the aluminum companies say you can recycle aluminum infinitely. Well, okay, I'm okay. I'm galactic <laughs> terms. That's not quite true. But, Do you um, think you'll go towards like zero waste at some point? Like I mean, with the water thing. Yeah, and and that's the hope. So Linda and I went to a running industry conference about a month ago. Um, in this was a big topic. Right, so this is a lot of events are looking at this. There are really some uh, incredible leaders in this space, Chicago Marathon, the Houston Marathon, uh, Beach to Beacon, 10K out east, and um, which we have a, a, a good connection to through, through one of our elite athletes. And um, they, uh, there are some events that are, are couplets, that are, you know, are, are that they don't have any plastic water bottles at the end, um, and that they're, they're doing this work, and so um, expense, Logistics, they're they're definitely um, concerns, but we had one of one of the vendors had, and for more like trail races and things like that, just because it's a little bit of a different beast, um, they had, and I should have brought it with me, a, a, a collapsible, reusable like silicone cup that you can either tuck in a waistband or there's a loop that you can just put it around your finger, so you have that, and then at every water station they have spigots, and you can just quickly fill that and go. So there's there's a lot happening. Um, certainly in this in this space in the industry we got a lot of amazing ideas and came back with with probably more than we could uh, bargain with at this point but um, in fact that was one of, one of the sessions they said well you know you really kind of want to do one thing a year 
and we're like, well, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna bite off a little bit more than that this year. So, um, but but there are. I mean, it, certainly that's the goal. That every year, every year have less waste. Every year, be greener, more sustainable. Every year, um, be able to communicate to our participants. So hopefully they're taking that home and and um, and using that. So, and and we've been looking at maybe that that after race water is, is a little bit of a hybrid. So yeah, maybe we still have some plastic bottles and especially, it, you know, it, it can become, having adequate water is a safety issue, obviously, especially on a hot day. And um, so if you tell people, well, we're not having bottles and you have to bring your own cup and you other what, and then it's this horribly hot day that you can really kind of get yourself in a world of hurt. But um, part of our messaging, even starting this year, is going to be, you know, bring that reusable bottle. We're going to hopefully have some kind of system at the end where people can refill. So, um, and again, then hopefully every year it's it's some kind of combination. Maybe the the <coughs> aluminum th thing does pan out, and, and finding that sustainability sponsor to be a part of that. Um, so that that's that remains a work in progress. But that's that's a great question because eventually, yeah, I mean that would be that would be amazing. To be to be able to do that um, and, and reduce our impact in that way. So post race water is still a huge one. Um, a couple more items on this list, and then just a few more I'll mention. Um, shirt packaging. Again, our our shirts came individually, each in a, its own little plastic sleeve, and um, it's just a matter. Of, you know, it's really easy for our volunteers to hand those out. We're not going to be doing that anymore. Linda just called up and said, "Okay, we don't want to we don't want to see that anymore." That's a huge one. Um, we will um, have a shoe recycling campaign, and that's going to begin with our training runs, weekly training runs later this month. So people can bring in their used running shoes, and then those will be recycled. What's that? Yeah, don't ask me to repeat yeah. jokes. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> those will be reused. Is the goal? Yes, they'll go to thank developing you. countries, um, and it will be an enterprise uh, situation for for people there um, so it's it's even better I mean the, and then the ones that aren't reused they are still work in process where they will recycle the ones that are just you know too bad um, but so and and you know for them our you know 400 or 500 mile pair of shoes that you know we put that many miles on is seems brand new to them so so we will that's that's even better because it's a reuse situation for sure. So, a um, couple other things I just want to mention, and then we can talk about the corporate challenge giveaway, and that'll be on the next slide. But um, we are we've we've been talking to various folks and partners, and again, there'll be more about that. But um, wanting to encourage people, for example, let's bring in some bike racks and have designated bike rack parking. So, people, if you're you know you're five miles from the event, why not ride your bike as a warm up and instead of taking taking your vehicle and needing to park or shuttle or do whatever and and to try to as, as part of our messaging communication kind of make that like a, a VIP kind of thing so if you're riding your bike you know we want to have some kind of special area some kind of special um, treatment some sort of incentive for you um, to be doing that so we're also working on that effort um, one thing that's been brought up um, and that maybe applies a little bit less to our race but I think is good from a messaging perspective is carbon offsets mm -hmm. so our um, you know, our race is heavily local. It's 99% of participants, I think, come from within 60 miles. So it's not, people aren't, it, with the exception of our elites, and we've talked about maybe doing something with them, um, people aren't flying in from all over the country as they are for some of these marquee marathons, Chicago and, and all of that, but um, trying to promote the idea of carbon offsets, and we've talked about, because we do fly in a handful of elite athletes from across the country, you know, can we, can we do something that is, um, talking about carbon offsets and just basically more of an informational campaign and saying hey we're we're paying the, the carbon offsets for these elites coming in or um, Joan Benoit Samuelson who's involved with the Beach to Beacon 10k uh, founder of that race that I mentioned and one of our elites 1984 um, women's marathon champion you know if, if if part of our PR efforts are her saying you know this is as, as part of these green efforts I paid my carbon offsets and this is how I did it and, and all of that. So we're, we're talking about that. Um, we're talking about maybe even having a bigger um, uh, campaign either this year or in future years around, well, yeah, you, you rode your bike to the Bell and Run, and we've got this bike parking, but did you know there's opportunities to do that kind of thing, you know, year-round, be it commuting to work or, 
or doing whatever. So we've got um, kind of ideas, big and small. I mean, one thing that, you know, there's so much that goes into an event like this. Um, one of our team members brought up zip ties. And if we're using so many zip ties to tie the, the fencing together, well, if they're this long, do they need to be this? Could they be this long? Carly has found some um, examples of a more sustainable, I'm going to have to go back and look at what she sent us, but a, a, a more sustainable zip tie, essentially. When you consider all those, those zip ties, they get snipped and left on the ground and in the neighborhood and, and end up as, as waste. Those are things that we can do and continue to look at. Um, I'll talk briefly. I'm talking a lot. I apologize. I want to give you guys a chance <laughs> to ask questions and have a discussion. But um, cor our corporate challenge giveaway, maybe we can go to the next slide, please, Linda. Um, so again, our corporate challenge is our largest participatory program. We have almost 6,000 um, individuals who are part of various companies who participate. And um, again, the goal, as it is for our entire event, is just to get feet on the street, get more people involved. There are some perks that come with the corporate challenge, including race packet delivery to your um, to your company, as well as a little giveaway. We've done reusable tumblers in the past. We've done little fanny packs because that's back. And um, this <laughs> it's, did it never go away? It's true. Well, good point. <laughs> Um, and this year it's a reusable stuff. So again, um, we, we had this idea and we thought, well, they can't really brand it. And we had those straw discussions there. with John. Yeah, cool. And yeah. this is our, and our corporate can. challenge sponsor. Cool. So we did a little bit. Yeah. yeah, so again. I got one of those on my board. Both is, yeah. Well, somebody, somebody gave it to me and I don't remember. But yeah, they're cool. Yeah. Yeah. If you get one of that's branded, you'll remember where you got it. That's right. Uh, I'll have to look at that. It's branded. I'll have to look. Yeah, yeah, I know you can brand it right on the thing. Yeah. So yeah. It's so we think again, this is both from a practical <coughs> giveaway, a little bit something different point of view, and from a um, an awareness type of thing. You know, where the the the, plas the straw band has a thing hasn't reached our area yet, but um, you know, obviously, so many communities across the nation are doing that. So we thought that would be a great way to um, to incorporate that. So real quickly, I've mentioned some of these. Um, we have just kind of let you know what we're doing, who we're partnering with, some of the work that we're doing around this. Um, we do have within our Bell and Run Operations team a sustainability committee um, made up with various representatives who are um, uh, interested in and, and involved with this work. Um, we're working with John and his wonderful intern Carly um, uh, with MB, and that's that's been great so far. She's um, really taken some initiative on some things and, and is helping us out. Uh, Council for Responsible Sport, that's out in Portland. Um, we've talked to those folks, they're doing great work um, around this, this very thing and we're, we're discussing in future years possible certification with them. It is a little bit expensive, so something that we have to kind of weigh and consider. And then they also have a, a sort of audit program where they, they will fly somebody out to um, you know, kind of conduct a a head to toe sustainability exam of your events. So those are things for possible future collaboration. I mentioned um, Joan Benoit Samuelson, who is the founder of the TV Beach to Beacon 10K, um, one of our elite athletes, past champion of the Bell and Run and, and friend of, of Bell and Health as well as the event. And we've we've been working with her and then we, we talked just today with um, uh, familiar with Rock the Green in Milwaukee. Uh, yeah, so the the it's well it's the events and the, the festival and, and their efforts. Um, we were talking with their owner and founder and um, a, a local doctor down in Oshkosh who's been really dedicated to this work. So we're really trying to cast as, cast as wide a net as possible. Um, and that's also what brings us to you folks. So um, obviously today our goal is not only to have me talk a lot, which I want to do, <laughs> um, but to learn more about your efforts um, you know, as, as a board, um, answer any questions, and then just discuss um, some of the ideas that we've just floated, as well as possible avenues for partnership. Hear what you guys think, and just um, open that dialogue for, for possible future collaboration. Thank you. That's great. Kelly. Oh. Yes. Got so much things to say. <laughs> Good. Um, couple things that, that came up. We talked about doing a carbon offset. Uh, we, uh, as a commission, have looked at um, uh, allocating, we allocated some Lambo sales tax money for certain solar installations in the city mm -hmm. um, at, a, at a fire station and then at Lake Park as well. Um, so we had also talked about what would it look like if we put up 
some small solar installations at, at city parks to offset shelter electrical use. I'm just throwing that out there as a possibility for Bellin since we do have such a close tie, you know, our park and Bellin um, in yeah. the neighborhood as a possibility if that's something Bellin would be interested in looking into, you know, doing maybe a project on Astor Park um, shelter group. I think so. so that's just a possibility. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then also because uh, I know we have, we have two members here who live in the neighborhood and um, a couple of city staff members that are very green. And uh, we tried to restart the neighborhood association last year and one of the things we talked about was how could we be more helpful as far as like a cleanup effort for the Bell and Run. Um, but if, if there are things that Bellin is still looking for from neighbors, um, or that would aid some of these sustainability efforts. I think the neighborhood is pretty full of people who would want to assist. So if you awesome. down the line come up, or right now you have some ideas, um, please feel free to reach out and let us know. That's wonderful. Yeah. And we will. Aster does also claim Aster Park too. It's not just. It's a neutral territory. Gotcha. Okay. Sure. And so you are in the. Aster Neighborhood Aster Association. East River. We're Aster East River. So um, the big houses are Aster. <laughs> <laughs> the more modest sized houses are Aster East River. It's a good way to remember. <laughs> <laughs> but that but that the Aster yeah. East River is who we had partnered with in the Correct. past previously. Yeah. Okay. So there may be still some interest even though the formal neighborhood association is kind of in right. flux. Right. Um in, in maybe assist. I mean I think Thing that pops to my mind immediately is again those recycling efforts mm -hmm. and just being a part of that crew because I think we're going to need a lot of hands on deck come race day. But yeah, and the other one is that we talked about the, the bike racks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's getting them there is one thing, but making it like a part of the event where there's engagement, it just has can just be you know, great job when you come back, you're going to get this if we have straws left over or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and having people who are mm -hmm. excited about it would would be helpful. So those are the two things that mm -hmm. uh, I have in mind, too. You could, sorry. sorry. You could um, try to get a bike store to donate a bike and then get people tokens for a bike raffle if idea. they ride their bike. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. Um. And then next year you could recycle. Oh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Deb. Oh, oh, that's okay. Um, is there any thought? You're doing a fantastic job. It's really exciting. I'm very proud that you're doing this in our community. Um, any thought about skipping the t-shirts at all? You know, people go to four races a year, pick up a t-shirt every race, and then every year they do it. I mean, my husband had, you know, and all the energy and resource and human power that goes into doing that that's a, a great call out we have not at, to this point discussed getting rid of them entirely but we are looking into recycled options so one of the giveaways mm -hmm. at the, this conference we went to was a recycled texture um, and and I think those have come a long way and are, are you know even even just a texture texture you know we used to give out cotton because then the textures were too expensive and those have come down in price and I think the recycled option is going to continue to come down in price too, so that maybe we can can do that because um, that's right. That's right. That's a huge one. Um, some I know some races are, um, and I don't know that we would do this, but but kind of food for thought as an FYI for you. Some are offering an opt out mm -hmm. of the T-shirt, so for five bucks less, you can say, "No, nah, I'm good. I don't want the T-shirt." Because yeah, they, they it, it accumulates quickly. You know, a few races a year, and all of a sudden, you know, you have, right. you maybe have shirts that you're not wearing, but um, and, and the recycled material, it's pretty, it's pretty good, you know. Like I think our participants would, would dig it, and um, but that's that's a really good thought, something to keep in mind for for future. Or an opt-in for a reusable bottle instead, or something with a brand. Oh well, yeah, to have kind of a yeah, I like that. Yeah, I think the opt-in things, because T-shirts. I mean, then if your event's canceled, then you're stuck with ten thousand T-shirts. For whatever reason, I don't know. I've seen things that not your race, but events that have been canceled for weather or whatever, and then you're stuck with ten thousand t-shirts. I don't think, and you, you just 
They're not like t-shirts you wear. We didn't cancel the <laughs> right. for six years. Yeah. One is an option. option. Yeah. We deferred, but we, yeah. Yeah. we gave those away. And, and yeah, it's definitely something items. that as we survey our, we, our event is a little bit different from some other events because it, for a lot of people, it's the only running event they do a year. It's their like, this is how I'm gonna get off the couch in the winter, and then they do it. And we, we started the Title Home Race Series because then they were, you know, okay, I did my thing, I, I did my bell and run. Um, so I feel like it, it's a little bit different than, than other events where you have runners who do a million events. Um, but if, if they can opt in or out, they can't this year because they already ordered those shirts. <laughs> um, but definitely something to look at for, right. for next year. And I think that's going to be a key part of our mm -hmm. efforts, especially this first year, is to survey. Sean's going to kill us. That survey's going to get longer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> our operations guy is like, no more survey questions. <laughs> um, but to, to survey participants, and, and whether that's a separate survey or, or however we, we gather that information, and to say, hey, what did you like? What didn't you like? What would you like to see in the future? Would you be interested in an opt-in or an opt-out or a switch or a, a what have you? Um, so I think that's going to be really an important part of these efforts as well. Um, and again, the, the communication both on the front end and on the back end to say, hey, what did you think? One, one part of our discussion, initial discussion with John, which I think was really valuable, was talking about making some of these changes while still maintaining the, the integrity and the flavor, essentially, of the event. And so I think that that's something that we've kind of tried to keep in mind as a guiding principle throughout all of this is, is it, it's, we still wanted to look and feel like the bell and run, but I think there are a lot of people, you know, we started hearing feedback, and this isn't why we're doing it, but we, we, we're hearing feedback about those plastic bags, and understandably so, right? Um, so I think as we go, that'll be a key part of our efforts. I have another idea for the opt in or out thing. Um, so we're working on trail development throughout the city, mm -hmm. you know, as the Parks Department, and just thinking if it's like a $5 savings or something, perhaps people would want to donate $5 towards trail development or something that would like accommodate a use mm -hmm. that they would be interested in. Yeah. Cool. yeah, I think that's great, yeah. That is a potential. It's like on the application, they could opt out and instead pay the same. Right. And send the five bucks. But they're That's amazing. They're and five bucks instead to. of your t-shirt that goes <laughs> to. Yeah. So it's not only an opt out, right, but right, it's a, uh, yeah, I think that's a great idea. And we probably, <coughs> sorry, I'm taking notes and making sure I save this. Um, yeah. And, and it probably would be something like we, you know, give a couple different options. You know, maybe that's, it's divided up to, you know, these you have these uh, possibilities in terms of makes it more complicated for us but in terms of of usage uh, if if we say give them a couple options that will we relate back to them because we know people I hate to say it you know it's it's, it's about me so I don't I don't want to give money to this if I live here but if we give them a couple options and then and and it is an option they can keep the shirt if they want so great idea yeah, exactly. and, and certain things that are um, you know we already are we do medals every five years so we're not doing a medal every year and, and things like that and, um, but I think so next year will be a medal year so that'll be something that we kind of try to keep in mind as we're planning for that as well is what that that impact and what those medals look like the the kids run um, you know what we can do for those those giveaways and to try to the reasonable straw probably is not the thing. I don't think that's gonna <laughs> excite your. <laughs> well, it would excite parents. I, I was gonna <laughs> say, yeah, that's that's true. Oh, but medals really that? <laughs> Kids like medals. Yeah, kids do. Yeah. And, and then again, it's why the balance. Why would you give medals? Yeah, the well, little brush would be fun because it's going directly to <laughs> the. <laughs> 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 yeah. Get there, oh, really? So, really? so really? you know, there's always the balance between. You know, you know, treasure you know, people. The, but the kids do. Yeah. We, I, I, to be honest with <laughs> you, I don't. Know. Really? But, I mean, I, the kids do. with yeah. some, but yeah. you get to the point. But with the kids, it's the balance between getting them excited about physical activity. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's, yeah. there is all, there is a very fine line, that balancing, where we look at what we're, you know, what, what we're doing for the environment, for the good of the environment, and also what we're doing for the good of the health of our 
participants, our community, yeah. um, and you know, just trying to make those choices that I, I don't think we'll ever get rid of the kids' medal, is what I'm saying, because it gets the kids excited to be there. And it's very important, um, whereas we might, you know, with, with the adults, it might be a little different story. So. Do you foresee, uh, the kids, the, we love the family night. We go every year to that. And I'm just wondering, do you foresee doing some kind of environmental education during that family night, something for kids? Well, in the, that's a good. You know, I, know, I think we had talked about that at one point, our, um, our children's area lead is coming back from maternity leave next week. Mm -hmm. So um, that will be definitely something to discuss with her. Can we, within that area, next to your bouncy houses and your whatever, have something that's environmental? And I think maybe <coughs> Chicago at their expo has something along those lines that's an environmentally themed activity for the kids. Um, you know, and if you know of anything that's, that's already yeah. out there that we could move, uh, like some fun display interactive thing that um, that we could use. Yeah, right. you, I mean you might want to think about just tying it in with the things that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's like the bike riding yeah. and like, you know, some of the things you've picked out about, you know, why you're doing aluminum, like rather than plastic bottles right. and just, so tying it just directly to the actual that you're doing. doing that. I think that's a good idea. And um, just another kind of side note about the expo, you know, as, as more of a, a, a near and a far probably is to, um, and I think I mentioned earlier, but to really encourage those vendors to be um, sustainable and, and we've had some fun ideas about, you know, can we, um, you know, we, we we're talking to the Rock the Green founder today, you know, can we have, they have, as part of their event, they have a cycle team that powers their stage, that powers their main stage during their event. I mean, how cool would something like that be <laughs> on, on whatever yeah. scale? Yeah, wow. within during our the award ceremony. Yeah, yeah, during the yeah during the award ceremony, we've just got you know the the teams pedaling away or they're they're you know they're running the speakers for Big Mouth and, right. and, yeah. and what all that what all that looks like. So um, that's definitely another area of potentially you know what kind of chachkis are, are vendors giving away and can they give another thought to what's a little piece of plastic that's going to end up in somebody's trash after they decide they don't want X, Y, or Z. I'm not calling anybody out. I can't think of an example of that. But. Are you going to try to find a, uh, someone to purchase the carbon um, offsets from and then make that available to people signing up? Yeah, we haven't done any research on that. We just yeah. kind of got that idea last week, so we're going to Because my guess is, you'll, yeah. like, the first question that comes to my mind is, oh, how can I do that? Right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, what are you know, like, it would yeah. be... And I think that is something that we can build into our registration mm -hmm. platform. Um, we would just have to figure out kind of what that looks like and, and how to do that. But yeah, maybe it's a matter of this year we have some sort of um, some sort of motion, but you know, with our leads and say, hey, this is this is what we're doing, and, and because I think it's something that people, I don't know, I mean, how much awareness is there among the general public that that's even a thing? I didn't know much about it, to be honest with you. Um, and as we've started to do some of this, this work and this research that's, that's come up several times is, yeah. is that possibility. Now when they said that, I, I, I don't have any idea, but I'm thinking our race registration platform that has thousands of races, they probably have something in place and we just need to ask them. Yep. That's my hope. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, they, we'll someone put suggested that we put that, you know, we put that in as part of our registration platform. I can add that tomorrow if, if it's a thing. We don't have to worry about what happened to the people already registered, but you know, those things are We're just a link the to tools. On right. your website, if that doesn't yeah. work. You know, right. It's exactly. a website of who you're using. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And there's right. lots of opportunities with our social messaging and um, our participant communications. We do weekly email blasts and things like that leading up to the event. Um, not only to talk about what we're doing, but again, to solicit that feedback, those ideas, to share some of those things that even if it's not built into the registration platform this year, hey, just wanted you to know that we're, we're doing X, Y, Z, and, and these are some options for doing that, so. Now, I understand correctly, you're, you're looking for, you need volunteers? You're looking for volunteers? Always need more volunteers. Okay, have you thought of addressing the Green Bay Neighborhood Association Council? where all the neighborhood associations come together uh, to discuss business and have a nice, you get a nice 
dinner. <laughs> oh, is it over on Main somewhere? Well, they got they moved it to but Tundra Lodge now. They, they okay, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, then you'd get idea. all the neighbor associations. You could dress them in because you know the whole city. This is yeah. a citywide event. You might be interested. That's a great idea. Thank you for that. Yeah, because we're always looking for an our, our and we always get enough volunteers, but our volunteer director is usually tearing her hair out a little bit about two weeks to race day going, um, okay, are we going to make it? But, yeah, um, and I, I, I mean, I'm thinking this, if we, we could use four times the volunteers that we've had in order to make the recycling part and the biking part um, really be effective. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, when you're already scrambling. And it's a dirty job. So you have yeah, to have people who are really committed to it. Exactly. To, you know, get in there their gloves on and getting in there so it's not the glory job mm -hmm. it's not you know like everyone wants to do the water station the water stations are awesome but it's not the but it really is the opportunity to, all right. to make a difference <laughs> this has been super helpful guys and i know we've taken up a lot of your time already and um we've got more meeting ahead but we really just appreciate the opportunity to have a little FaceTime, tell you what we're doing, um, get some great suggestions already. Um, Mark, I'll make sure you have my card before we go and we can connect um, as far as that goes. And then, um, in fact, I, I might even, oh no, I don't have one with me, I'm sorry. I was gonna say, I might even have a card, enough cards for everyone, but um, I'll take yours and Ned knows how to get me. Mm -hmm. And we, um, you know, we can certainly be in touch for my engine. Oh, yes. I just need your address. Uh, 4441 Wyandotte Trail. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Yes. Thank you so much. When you wake up in the middle of the night and you have an idea for us, mm -hmm. just give us a quick email. Because right. I know you will. Yeah. Exactly. You will. You'll be doing it. You're welcome. You're Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cool. Right. All right. Well, we will move well, on I to I don't uh, want to think we're regular playing. business. You know, one, which is Item D. Discussion with possible action on 2020 City of Green Bay Sustainability yeah. Commission yeah. Work Plan. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So y'all that were on the commission early last year might recall we had a similar uh, matrix that outlined our goals. Uh, that really only got us through 2019. I figured it was uh, an apt opportunity to um, revisit them. And it's still early 2020. So uh, yeah, this is our uh, annual work plan. Um, I also thought that it was important to take the opportunity to, to kind of recenter some of our goals, uh, you know, as uh, as we're all aware, there are a lot of different directions that we can take uh, sustainability in the community, which is great. Uh, but we also want to make sure that we're maximizing our impact and being strategic. Um, so uh, I guess what follows here really outlines some of the, uh, the areas that we've really been working on. And I guess I want to preface this by saying that just because something uh, isn't on here it doesn't mean we can't uh, take it up. Uh, the thing about environmental issues is they often arise with much urgency uh, and that allows us an opportunity to take them on um, as needed. Um, but um, yeah, I guess just to be transparent to council and to the rest of uh, the city staff here wanted to um, look at these goals. So. Um, I know some folks have uh, gotten a chance to look at these, uh, especially the areas they are leading on, um, to uh, make some edits because I made some assumptions here and I don't know exactly uh, everything that's happening in every single area. Um, but I guess the one area that I'm fairly confident about is the top one. So if we just want to go through it uh, line by line, um, we can make those edits as appropriate. Um, and then uh, have any other further discussion or changes. So starting with clean energy, um, you know, we have set our goal 100% clean energy by 2050, both municipality-wide and community-wide. Um, that has been the goal that's been established. Uh, that was uh, approved in our work plan by council. The mayor reiterated his support for that goal, so that's all fine and dandy. Um, uh, the research and evidence, the benchmarking of city buildings, which I think it's just, it's gonna be done this week. So that's pretty exciting. Um, so thank you Celestine for finding all of the data from a million different departments. Um, and also thank you 
uh, to uh, the NWTC folks who aren't here, obviously, but who have done a lot of the um, heavy lifting there. Mm -hmm. We have some actions that are um, that I think are incredibly urgent uh, for this goal. I think number one, um, so we kind of have this two-pronged goal, um, and this is this really isn't um, anything new. Um, but we have this two-pronged goal of municipal operations for uh, clean energy usage and community at large. The community at large one, we have until 2050, so let's not focus on that one quite yet. The one that we can do and that is within our control is uh, municipal operations. So figuring out a plan uh, to get all of our clean energy um, to be 100% clean uh, on a given timeline. So. Um, we've talked with the folks from Johnson Control, Celestine and I have, and we're following yeah, up with them next week. Yeah, we so. do. I'm sorry, are you in bullet one? The yeah. bullet, bullet one in action. Yep. Yeah. Um, yes. So that, I mean, that will be a component of that, so that's an action that is ongoing. Um, bullet two under actions, reducing energy usage, I believe that will also kind of be a component of something Johnson Controls could help with, or we can figure out a strategy to reduce energy usage. But here's the thing, if we want to, have 100% clean energy for city operations, we should first reduce our energy usage. So I think that's a really um, important goal. We also have an idea of our solar capacity on city properties. There's loan money available for the state that we've been talking about for a while, and this could also be part of the um, part of the uh, uh, agreement with Johnson Controls. Also, I know there's been discussion, I know Randy's brought it up a few times, and other communities have uh, started looking at um, ordinances for new buildings uh, that the city constructs or renovations to have them be um, energy efficient, passive solar, uh, solar, clean energy, etc. So I think that would be a really cool priority. Um, and I think those three things, three, four things, I can't count, three things, <laughs> um, all of them uh, would be attainable by 2021. And then the rest is pretty straightforward here. I would also like to drill down further. This is just kind of a very high altitude thing. Drill down further with a renewable energy work plan that we had last year to um, update that, and that's something that can happen in the next few months here. Yeah. Thoughts, edits, changes, or we can go yes. on to climate resilience. Requests. I don't know, a request maybe, comment, mm -hmm. request. I understand that you're doing amazing stuff it looks like um, and uh, I was wondering for and it sounds like you know you want to tackle the community aspect later but is there any way to just pull together maybe resources of things pe so people know, could you could help residents understand what they could do today does, does that exist because that would create be, maybe like, a, <laughs> a library I don't a resource know. list like for if, residents if a resident yeah. is interested right yeah. like um, what do they need to know or what's available in resources to see if it's feasible for their home? Yeah. Because I think that would, that's a great idea. I don't know, for especially with the people who would do it without you making a plan, mm -hmm. potentially, right. or anything. And as, an, as the incentives are slowly going away, mm -hmm. yeah. now, now is the time to act on doing that. I oh, think really? that makes sense. So. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you know, it was when um, the folks present, the person presented, he was just talking about like even stuff about like how do you know if your roof might be a good candidate or anything and then yeah i don't like what is the first step basically mm -hmm. right. um or resources. i think the clean energy work group would be a very appropriate space for that mm -hmm. conversation and actually that reminds me of a program that uh, the group citizen action of wisconsin is running um, I don't know if anybody here is a part of that, um, but they're basically helping folks get like solar, like loans, I think through Associated Bank for solar. Are you a, uh, uh, what are they calling them? Participant? Participant, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they had like a fancy name for it, but. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I they, didn't, they didn't share that with me. They didn't yeah. give me a fancy name. Yeah. I had yeah. a pretty long talk with Kevin. Okay. So this in action about that program. Yeah. And fellows, they're calling them fellows. Yeah. They, um, no, they wouldn't call me a fellow. So there's, they're working with um, banks and credit unions to create a program for homeowners um, <coughs> to do major energy efficiency projects, um, whether it's solar or new windows or what have you. But that is a thing happening right now, and there's a short 
I think, timeline on that. Right Couldn't now. we get him to come up and give it? Yeah. Yes. Noah or Kevin. That would be great. What is the program called? Yeah. Through Citizen oh, Action. Okay. Let me pull up the actual name of there. No, we in we'll invite Noah to the working group, too. Let's do that. That's the Green and Union Homes Fellowship. Right? I mean, that's the name. That's the official name is Green and Union Homes Fellowship. So the idea is to hire union contractors to do these green efforts um, at residential properties. Mm -hmm. Partnership? Yeah. They got a whole program. Most of it Fellowship doesn't apply to me. Of the ring. Because mm -hmm. I got a bunch of trees. Yeah. I can't go solar. Cut them down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's <laughs> not just solar, right? It's, right, right. It's but it's just a nice uh, insulation. It's you know. don't cut down the trees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> solar. But they even they've even and I could share that maybe uh, they've got a um, spreadsheet where they if you like uh, power strips they've got power strips now that'll save energy yeah. when you, they do. so if you uh, and other things look at other things. In there. You mean smart strips? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, you you yeah. you say you put in what well, all these different things, and it, it gives you the cost, and then it tab tabulates how much it is and how much you probably save. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a pretty cool tool. So, is it free or reduced cost or? Well, they see, and now that's another thing is they they tell you if you say, well, I want these smart strips. You can either give them your credit card and they'll get them for you because they've done all the research on what's the cheap mm -hmm. ones, best ones, or they'll give you the information and you can go get it yourself. I mean, it's. But I mean, to have someone come out to your home? You don't really need. Well, they, there is energy. There's an energy audit. 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 But yeah, that's what you would probably start with. Okay. Right. And that's separate. Yeah. Well, they, they would help you set that up, but they, they don't have someone that comes. You would have to get someone, a local, local contractor. person, a local See, these contractor, are the kind of who they have already. You know, questions. figure out where it was to go to, and so contact them, and so we can get somebody to to maybe come present yes. about this program to yes. our commission, and then to your original point, uh, what if we added under actions, promote clean energy and energy efficiency resources for community? That would be great. Does that mean? I could ask you. Central. Yeah. He, I talked to him about coming up. And, and if we have a website, any yeah. next Oh, Noah might be here, too. Yeah. 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 Sure, Noah's here. Noah's the organizer. Yeah. Oh, well, well, yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe okay. put this stuff like on our website? Either one? Yeah. Do you want me to ask? Yeah, like a tab. Sure. Either one? Go out I to the neighborhoods, the neighborhood yeah. letter that we're working on? Yeah. I mean, maybe, I guess we'd have to wait because we need to hear this person talk before we understand it ourselves. But that could be a good way to reach the neighborhoods. Cool. Yeah, it'd be great. Like the next letter or something. Yeah. Well, that right now it's kind of in the early state. They've we've it's done they've done one round, and they're I think on their second one or about to go on their second <coughs> one when they're taking no. candidates. So I don't know how what their capacity no is quite yet to okay. be doing all this. Okay. Uh, but it's definitely something they want to roll. Right. I'll just email that one. Yeah. Cool. Seth, I would add uh, one other item underneath your actions. Yeah. That we will work on. Uh, climate action plan yeah. so complete climate action plan excellent do we need motions for those Celestine? what is this what um, is uh, what climate what action we'll plan just clean energy edit all everything and just accept um okay. what's that change what is this are you taking notes uh, uh, it so sets uh, goals and targets as we move I mean, towards uh, okay. you know basically clean energy so it's all energy based. It's all energy based. Okay. Because yeah. it's not, we, go, I mean, we have a category under climate resilience. It's not, the no, climate we'll, action plan is no. No, we're, we're really targeting, it's, it's carbon reduction. Okay. Yeah, we're reducing our carbon footprint to essentially zero. Um, that's really tiny carbon shoes. That's mm -hmm. very tiny. <laughs> but it's very focused on, yeah, ener it's energy. It's all energy. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm going to write it down too. Tiny carbon shoes. Cool. Other thoughts, yes. or should we move on to climate resilience? Uh, so just make sure that I have captured. I only have one thing that I've added. Hmm. I do have one more to add. Okay. Partners. Oh, hold on. Okay. Um, so uh, complete con climate action plan. That's the only thing I've added hmm. to that. And additionally, a bullet under actions promote clean energy and energy efficiency resources for a community. Promote. Promote. 
clean energy resources for community? Clean energy and energy efficiency resources for our community. And then we'll just see who we can get here at a future meeting. Okay. Great. I would like to add partners. Um, Seth and I and um, Casey Hicks presented at the school board on Monday to um, promote a clean energy proposal similar to what we're doing at the city level but um, uh, we would like to partner with they're going to form the school district is going to form a energy task force or an energy working group and we've kind of in invited them to join what we're doing at the working group level so uh, I think the school district could be considered a partner and eventually hopefully the you know Brown County government would mm -hmm. would want to establish something like that where we could share ideas uh, across different municipal governments but as for right now the Green Bay Public Schools district is interested And hopefully this funding sources thing will grow in the future too, but we'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> cool. Other thoughts? Great feedback. All right, we'll move on to climate resilience. Uh, I made some assumptions, so uh, sure. Julia, yeah, I will defer to you. <laughs> I actually, I kind of think the category should be water resources. Okay. Maybe, Instead of climate resilience. Yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> and then the goal could be worked on. For sure, I don't have a goal, but <laughs> but it sh but the, like the green infrastructure plan is a thing, not a goal really. Yeah. So yeah, yeah as an action, as an action. Uh, but like I don't know if it, the goal is something about uh, green infrastructure and stormwater management or something like that. I don't know. So the goal would be more related to water resource management. So it reduce flooding to save water. What are, you, what are you thinking about? I don't know. I just started thinking about this right now. Um, well, then, would well, it can be, I, be is this something? Could yeah. it be water resources and climate resilience? Because we're dealing with how to how to deal with some of these flooding issues. I mean, that's mm -hmm. climate resilience, right? Yeah, but climate resilience also, though, to me, is more than water. I mean, there's like urban island heat effect and um, flooding. Well, I mean, that's a water issue, but a different kind of, different like, kind of water. That's like what I mean. it can't though. be, I don't, yeah. yeah, so you think climate resilience is good? Well, we th this, this talks about green infrastructure, right? Isn't that? So, uh, Isn't sure. Resilience also I don't know, or both, like, like water. water. I agree with you. I think I agree with you. I think I agree with me, too. I don't really know what um, <laughs> So that can, maybe it would be good if I th thought about, like, those things mm -hmm. in general, and I'll just give an update. <laughs> where we're at. How's yeah. that? <laughs> that I mean, that? Under the actions you have developed, green. Yeah, the green infrastructure plan should definitely be under the actions. resilience plan for stormwater management. Which is basically the, which is basically what the goal is. So just, right. we should come up with a good, I think, okay. A broader goal. So keep a climate resilience. And then keep under the goal, climate. we'll have something in there about the things we just mentioned. Like managing water. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. yeah. I mean, you um, yeah, what do you think? I mean, we got flooding, we got flooding issues, we got urban island, we got environmental justice mm. issues potentially. Mm. I don't know, like water. Does water quality fall? Stormwater, water quality is a big one. Water quality is a really big one. So water resources is a pretty... Yeah, water resources is a good, in general. And you don't know anything about water resources, so somebody else should take this <laughs> I'm I'm kidding, kidding, I know, I'm I know, kidding. I know. I'm actually sorry, I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, so I'm, like, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just thinking about like food like, like food good. systems. We don't I don't know. I, for me like climate resilient that's why I so think Mark and I asked about the climate yeah. action plan is because we feel like I don't know if I think when I think climate action plan it's much more than just energy. Mm -hmm. It's all these things that we talk about. So climate so resilience is way like it's the broader it's broad, broad and then broad. water resources is a subcategory of that's kind resilience. of what I thought. Okay. In this especially the way we've been talking about it in this yeah, category. Right. And I can see I can see that too because yeah, category of clean energy is really straightforward, as it were. Climate resilience is and water really resources. broad. Water resources is broad, but you can 
you can subcategorize it really easily. I shouldn't say really easy, but you can subcategorize it into stormwater quality, stormwater volume, you know, water man water resource management type of categories. So I think water resources is a, probably a better broader category than climate resilience. Is climate resilience too broad? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Well, I th yes, I think so. but then you're, I think you're also starting like if we're if we were to really talking about this as the whole thing as a climate, you know, action resilience effort, then you would have both the like uh, mitigation of carbon and the resilience of dealing with an adaptation part. So the, both of them. And so there's things that are missing in general from those cat both of those categories. I would say, like um, urban food systems. Right. Like food, our food systems is a big category that we've never even right and someone mentioned refugees I mean that's maybe way down the line but yeah mm -hmm. maybe not what do you mean when somebody said refugees. refugees I said refugees yeah, yeah I mean oh yeah we are definitely climate, climate refugees. refugees well or you can think of that as an economic development opportunity because <laughs> people are going to be moving here so I mean it's but anyway yeah I don't know so wow. I guess uh, like green infrastructure falls under stormwater and water you know, like <laughs> more easily in this context, okay. how we've set it up. Okay. So what I'm hearing is we should change the category to water resources. For I mean, now, I know that's not yeah. a very good. That's fine. If you anyone has a better <laughs> one. This can be really like, yeah. So okay. Is it so water as a resource or water as a problem kind of in this category? You know what I'm saying? It's water resource management. So whether it's an excess or a lack or a quality, it's still management. I mean, you could, so you could water wanna, management? Do you want to just do rain. water? I mean, you could just do water. Water. Doesn't say anything. I know. Rain. <laughs> <laughs> I think water resources is good. Water resources management. Management. All right. Put it all together. I don't know. What do you? Yeah, add? I like that water resources management. Because you're basically trying to manage the water. Mm-hmm. Yes. And protecting. Exactly. There we go. I love it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, okay, so back to what we did last year. <laughs> we're doing we're doing it organized. Um, in terms of the actions, I mean the code audit is happening, right? Correct? Correct. Um, and then um, that's so great. Some of the under the research oh, I don't think I have. Uh, oh, some of the things that would go under research would be uh, the UW-Madison um, GIS mapping. Mm -hmm. I'll put that under there. Uh, so that's like baseline information for green infrastructure. Um, and then partners, you can put Fund for Lake Michigan under mm -hmm. there. And then also UW-Madison I would put under there and Sea Grant. Um, funding. So this is 2020. I really think for an action, okay, it does say like last year develop a green infrastructure plan. So that's kind of what I was trying to start and through the UV. Well, what I've really come, I think um, what would be a great next step is actually it's quite a large feat undertaking to do a large plan like that and complicated. And so I think it might be a good idea to maybe go out for a grant to do like a large scale uh, green infrastructure stormwater. A green infrastructure plan. I mean, I think they would argue there's already a stormwater plan. Plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to actually. Mm -hmm. So we put that in there. We started doing some baseline research stuff, but to take it to the next level, that is mm -hmm. actually an operational like plan to get us somewhere with some good targets would be helpful. But I think that's going to take um, some money and a grant, mm -hmm. and that would be so. And if anyone wants, and then Mark is a point person, right? <laughs> Are you a point person? I'm on this one. Yeah. Oh. It could be on more than one. Well, it has, yeah, it you says remember Julia. you're on my. I'm on, oh, yeah. You're technically the only, the other person who volunteered and Ed did, but we can never meet with Not Ed. Not working. No. Yeah. He just <laughs> says, go for it. So <laughs> I think you're still keep showing up to the meetings. Yep. Um, and then anyone else who's interested in working on the whole water resources would be great. At their resilience coordinator will be a key person, but, <laughs> but they'll be for everybody. So, so is there a way to project what you're doing, or do you want to not project? 
I guess I get your feedback for the arena infrastructure plan. I feel like it's at a stage where it would need to be like taken to at a higher level, like maybe get some grant funding to try to get a consultant to come do something a more a public. We could do a public process too and start doing. That's really where we could use some somebody to help coordinate that and then also do the analysis pieces too and bring it all together. Is the plan is that like for? Uh, the city owned land, the city as a whole, what does that look like? I think um, the Milwaukee ones, it's the city as a whole. Okay. Well, I think I should know that. City as a whole is a deep. Yeah, because like the Milwaukee Metropolitan <laughs> Sewers <laughs> District has it for a region, and I mean, so it's not like they don't own all the property. And so we'll, it would help us set some realistic stormwater green infrastructure goals. We're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Or a partner? Would you? Would the city be a partner? Like um, public works or like who is who is making the code? You know, it has to go to the city, right? Um, isn't the city a partner for this whole? Isn't the city? Yeah, yeah. I think it's so we're the in the interest of the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. We are, we are, we are the city part of the city. Right. right. Part yes. of the city. Okay. So I didn't know if you wanted to break it down to be more that. specific or not. Right. I guess not. Not. They could maybe be like. Either point people, or if the there's a document within that department. Ready, smash. Yeah, like who's, who's <laughs> going to be writing and rewriting the codes? Like what documents and what departments? <coughs> what do we be looking at? Uh, that, yeah. that might be where that you know okay. department comes in. Okay. I don't know. It's a guess. Oh, we don't have a. Oh, we don't have a. Cap, we don't have a column for like that. Like they would be city departments wow. right. engaged or something. Oh, uh, we okay. should add a column. Let's yeah. do that. <laughs> I love I want to add more stuff. Add more no, stuff. no, no. We're not doing that. We're not no, adding. I think a adding which <laughs> city department? Uh, no, no, is a terrible idea. Let's let idea. the facilities <laughs> coordinator handle that. Yeah, wow. this is just a roadmap for them, <laughs> yeah. and then they can choose their own adventure. That's a great idea. Okay, so I just find it difficult, I guess, to do the stormwater management plan as a whole if you're looking at, like, I'm just thinking about, for instance, right now at Bay Beach, we're mm -hmm. doing an overall stormwater management plan with a consultant for mm -hmm. any plant future development within the park mm -hmm. and we have our master plan and that's flexible and you know it's a guide for what we're doing but our hope is that by having this plan that we can implement it and then every time we build something we don't have to um, include that as part of the project because it's already been considered and so I'm just curious how you come up with a plan for a city when we do so for example go ahead finish what yeah you're, just when question. you're when you're not sure what that development's going to be, and yeah, you can kind of look at what planning and zoning and that type of thing. Um, because you're, th I think you're, that's a narrower scope, potentially. Okay. So, uh, for example, like Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewage District, they did it for their whole service area, which is 28 municipalities. Okay. And uh, they just threw out there a half an inch water, rainwater capture goal, okay. which is 740 million gallons of water in green infrastructure. So we just, we need a goal, and then we have to figure out what goes into that goal and what, how we get there. A lot of water. It's a lot of water. Wow. Yeah. First inch, right. And so, um, but then you break it down to, then you do some feasibility stuff. We have the mapping. It's like, um, where do you focus your energy? So is, is it, uh, actually lawn amendments are really going mm -hmm. well there, and they're really cheap. Is it bio, like uh, green streets stuff? Is it is so? Is it bio retention? Is it um, uh, green roofs? They all have categories of their own and potential goals and targets and stuff like that. And that that's based on a lot of you know some analysis and crunching and figuring out how to do it. Yeah, which yeah. I'm not going to be able to do by myself. So <laughs> does that make sense? Suggestion of I think it's like we first need the, like the goal. Like what is the right. goal? Like I don't know. It, and honestly, I just heard. Uh, their director talk and they just came out of no he just thought of that as it sounded like a good number but the city of Milwaukee <laughs> the city itself has done more advanced and they don't suggest you just pull a number out of you want to do something that's realistic mm -hmm. and sure. stuff like that so <laughs> okay but how would we and we can calculate that or you know like we could we have the mapping done so we could calculate how much an inch of water gallons we could convert that right now here we could do I can I didn't know this was on the test. What would we? It would be a citywide. It would be for. How okay. would we go about setting that goal? 
like that's we, exactly right so that would be a process okay. a planning process and that's what we need help with staff or somebody to help mm -hmm. do um so, so engineering staff probably no. no like think this is definitely a community engagement from planning process as much as it is a like a uh, data uh, mapping and quantity issue map exercise too because you want to look at neighborhood we've already started looking I mean maybe I I don't know we could bring the in April I think we have that grad student she could bring up her maps and oh, we yeah. could do that here because we've already nice. done some of the baseline analysis work and so we could share that with you and you could kind of maybe get a better idea of what I'm talking about yeah, I think it was like looking at she she um, uh, looked at uh, she you know identified like all the park park space and then for example that's available and did tree canopy cover so we want to do a calculation about tree canopy percentage the mayor is interested in that like compared to maybe other cities they some number like forty percent is a magical number or something so what are what is our tree canopy and if it's not that how can we get there? It doesn't seem like yeah forty percent. To me, oh, we have a lot of trees. Yeah, yeah, but uh, did we have? We do and we should. Yeah, yeah. It seems. It, yeah, yeah. It's a tree city. A lot of them are done. We are. Whatever. Yeah, actually, yes. ironically, the day that she was presenting on this and he was talking about, it, I was like, do you know they just cut down like 180 trees in this park last <laughs> yesterday? And he's like, what? Because <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. of the yeah. emerald ash borer. Yeah. But we should have like that would be in the like, you know, that should definitely. I'm sure that's in other things too. But I so. But so okay, so is the point that the codes are just old and they're based on rainfall events or precipitation events that are that are outdated because they happen more often, they happen more frequently. That's one, is that right? right? Is that, that is one small piece. So the other thing is there's just a lot of barriers potentially in codes and ordinances. So they could be outdated. Okay. Uh, they could limit certain practices, not meaning to, because they're complicated and it might refer to something that. So there's a lot of nuance in codes and ordinances. There might be opportunities to actually encourage, promote, or require green infrastructure in redevelopment sites. Mm -hmm. So the code, the person, we have a c the consultant um, will be um, coming to talk to city staff and really dig into what uh, what the issues are with city staff feels like. There's probably internal processes mm -hmm. that are having barriers in terms of decision making when we go through development phases. Um, and site plans and stuff like that just from uh, in, like those kind of those can be internal barriers there can be there are all sorts of like code and ordinance oh, barriers of definitely too and then there's opportunities to improve water quality in different random areas too so sh the code I will result in she, she'll try to gather as much input and then result in recommendations of what are the barriers and recommendations for what to how to reduce them mm -hmm. And so if we want to think more, you know, aggressively about what you want, that would be an opportunity to give that input and say that rather than just have it, you know, there's both. Mm -hmm. You can take away the barrier, you can also, I don't know, do promote a green streets ordinance or something, or a green alleyways ordinance or something like that, right? <laughs> so, I'm sorry. So listen, did you have anything to add nope. to that, Lauren? I do not. Anyway, so that is uh, more complicated than when I thought about it earlier. But what What do you think about? I just want to know: Is it what do you think about going out um, and then for a grant, hopefully, to do something like that? Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of like yeah. helping what you guys are doing. Put some actual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And remember, we have the council's blessing to start pursuing grants. As an entity, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you just need you need someone to do it, though. If they involve city staff, <laughs> but if they, if, but if they involve city staff or city resources, it still has to be has to go through the council for final approval. So just as a as a note for grants, I mean, you probably. I don't know how. Yeah, it would have to do that. In. So everything that we would want to do has to go through the council, right? Because I mean, I don't know how you could do anything without them. I think so. As long as it involves city staff or, or city time, city money. But the thing, the thing that we do have, that we asked for and we got, was the permission to get the ball rolling on these without waiting like, you know, a month after we meet here. Mm -hmm. We can kind of assume that, you know, well, at least we can get some things started in between now and when council approves. There's a, um, there's a grant application, pre-application due April 3rd. That would be pretty, it's just a pre-proposal. 
<laughs> so I'm just trying to get feelers out if anyone would be, be interested in, or do you, if, I just want to throw that out there. <coughs> I should. It's being pushed. Well, yeah, this will be our last time to meet before that. What is the? Oh, yeah. What is the grant? It's for the Fund for Lake Michigan. They have a pre-proposal that would be due April 3rd. I, I have a feeling they would be really, um, they would be, and it's just a pre-proposal, so we could just put it in there as a, a good idea for doing, trying to get some more funding to try to actually do a comprehensive analysis and planning process around this. And does the pre-proposal, I mean, I think that's exactly why we asked for this permission. Does the pre-proposal require city staff to do anything? Well, the city staff, Celestine did it last time, and they were like the key point person. I think, like in the future, maybe the resilience coordinator would do something like this. Yes. I, although, I, I guess saying this, though, I just want to be cognizant, like the, you know, it, what the resilience coordinator, it's not like we want to just, what do we want to, or what are they going to do? I don't know. Yeah, I, that's so, I, you know, I that's don't, something. Are they all? One, one grant. You'll have a chance to see time. the job description before we send it out. Then think, we'll no, do we I want to fill up their calendar immediately with? Yes, we do. Oh, okay. Well, well, I then, think, I then think we should talk like, about you. We could say as a commission that we'd be okay with you working on it as long as the mayor's office. Did the pre-proposal have to go okay through council first last year? No. Time? Okay. No. Because you're not committing yourself No, you're not. There's no commitment. You're not committing right. funding or staff time in your pre-proposal. And now that my yeah. spring break's totally canceled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not telling anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not telling anybody. That's You're volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I just, it just opened up more potentially. I don't know. I see an opportunity. So, I, but. I think they give us more money, though. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, you don't get it unless you ask. True. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So. Right. Because I talked to Mark in D.C. They're very happy, so. Not me, Mark. Yeah. No. No. Well, not, I've no. Not. Not. Not that Mark. Not that Mark. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, are you volunteering to do the pre-proposal then by April first? Well, I think I would like to talk to Celestine more about that, which what we that would need to do offline. Okay. <laughs> cool. Absolutely. And then I guess, do we make any changes uh, or additions to this document? Regarding that, so this is what I have. I have water resource management. Sorry, I can't for some reason. It um, won't let you're me. A, you're on a different screen. It's no, it did it when I was doing the yeah, PowerPoint. It's, it's got, that's because but the I've PowerPoint screen's before. over here and your screen's over here as far as it's concerned. It's a virtual screen. So. God, I've done that before. Yeah, it's I don't know what's technology. happening. It's annoying. Um, no, it's, it's a real screen. It's not a virtual screen. No, but the other one is a virtual screen. All right, anyway, it's it's moving, there, moving on. There. So water there. resource <laughs> management. Um, res reserve, I'm sorry, research or evidence, UW Madison GIS mapping. Then added to the actions or green infrastructure plan. Well, it, it does say develop a green infrastructure climate resilience plan for storm, it forced storm water management. Yeah, so I, I don't think need that's to add anything enough. more. No, okay. Are we leaving yeah. green infrastructure plan and the goal? I think I could fine? try to. Yeah, I took that out. Actually. Yeah, I would take that out. And maybe, maybe I can come back to yeah. it. That would be my opinion. Is, the goal, is the goal to manage water resources? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that for kind now? For right <laughs> now? <laughs> tonight? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can I just get, yeah, uh, like, email yeah. you or um, something yeah, yeah, yeah. better? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I don't have a target sorry, date. Uh, to partner, UW Madison Sea Grant. I was planning on it and I forgot. And Fund for Lake Michigan, sorry, she said yeah. as well. Madison nope, that Grant. funding well, sources. She said that for a partner, though, when she listed partners. Fund for Lake Michigan as a partner? Sure. As a funding source. As okay. a funding source. I don't know. Like there's the help. same in one and the same to me sometimes. So. Yeah. yeah. yeah but Honestly. Yeah. But a funding you know, company, okay, I'll, a partner whatever would be you more think, someone who's participating yeah, in the project They're a funding itself, source. Whereas a funding they're source. They're a funding source. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then, yeah, um, and then, and then point people, Julia partners. and Mark, and then additional documents. I don't have any. So I don't have any target date. What is the target date? I don't have one. Well, mm -hmm. You get to say that. When do you think we should have our 21, 22, oh, 20 frame? Can I send that? Green infrastructure yes. plan. You can sleep on it. Yeah. yeah. And it can be specific. The, the target date would be specific to one of the actions as opposed to the. I goal. guess. So, yeah. and, I, and I'm sorry. And I feel bad for the person who has to transcribe this whole thing. But uh, just 
like does this I just want to make sure though that whatever we try to go forward isn't overlapping or like you know there's going to be multiple to, you know the I don't know I'm trying to say. at this point don't, don't worry it about doesn't it matter it down and see what all right I think well, some of it was always like the comp plan. Like that's what I'm in my head. I'm yeah, like, how what, does what, what, what it does, I mean, speaking from a planning yeah. background kind of standpoint, all it does is reinforce. If, if you have goals that overlap, all that does is reinforce the other, each other. They're oh, reinforcing the priorities of some of the other goals. So if you have, if you have two goals that overlap in some portion, all they're doing is reinforcing the fact that they're good goals. You know? So yeah, I wouldn't worry about that part of this. I don't know, it's beautiful. It's like goals hugging. Yeah, that's like that. It's beautiful. Goal lesson. Goal, goal lesson. Uh, 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 <laughs> I was going there. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's out there. Feeling inspired. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> oh, I love Celestine's like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> what is the additional document? That, that was him. That was him. <laughs> um, like we have the renewable energy work plan that we had from last time. So if there's anything specific that's come out of like this commission or anything, so it can be NA. Awesome, thank you. Oh no, we can do some of the maps. Uh, what? Additional documents, maps. Maps? Okay. Maps, I can share. Okay. Maps, I love maps. Maps are good. Great, maps. Thank you. Like All right, <laughs> on to. Um, actually, can we add another thing to research and evidence under clean energy? Uh huh. Uh, that would be the Wisconsin Clean Energy Toolkit. Oh, oh. Ooh. Which. So there will there will be copies someday in the future on the agenda. They're not <laughs> yes, here right now. Uh, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Is that is there a PDF of that? Yeah. Uh, can you just send that to me? Yeah, I can. Because in that way I can oh. pop it in the oh, perfect. attachments. Yeah. And make copies for everybody. Cool. Now we can move on to um, waste reduction. Waste reduction. All right. Waste reduction. And I did I, I did my homework. Too. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I late last it. night and <laughs> to Julia. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you just did that. I know, but that's actually <laughs> <laughs> that's actually what I sent him because I didn't get anything. Or <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter if it's a week or five minutes ahead. <laughs> yeah. oh, all right. So right? actually, under the goal, <laughs> so waste yeah. reduction covers a lot of ground, obviously. And the goal at this point, I think, it, it's achievable. And for is actually reducing the amount of food waste that's being landfilled. Oh, that's actually. So, do you want me to take out, develop, and launch a curbside? That's actually going to shift under action. Okay, got it. All right. That would be an action. And then you said reduce food waste. Reduce the amount of food waste being landfilled. Ah. Cool. Cool. Nice. Oh, shit. And research. By, um, by what percent and by what year? Oh, whoops. That will, that will, uh, <laughs> well, okay, What's so your smart 22 percent of, of material going into a landfill is is food waste. So we're trying to to eliminate a portion of that, but I don't can know what that number is right now. They have 100 percent. Okay. Yeah, that, but it's not going to happen. What's realistic? Realistic. And the most aggressive ones. I would have to get a better sense of what, and I don't have the numbers. I've looked at recently because there's residential food waste, there's post consumer food waste, yeah. there's okay. commercial food waste, yeah. so there, there are a variety of things. But basically, out of in Brown County, we're landfilling 280,000 tons of material a year, and just, you know, almost a quarter of that is food of some kind or another. Um, so, it's a matter of what can be achieved. So under the research or evidence, La Crosse, mm -hmm. Madison, Milwaukee, Stevens Point all have programs right now that they're working on in some stage of development. Uh, we've been talking to Milwaukee a lot in the last week or so. Um, they just sent out an RFP for food waste collection services, um, request for source separated organics collections and processing service. Milwaukee just sent this out. Question mark. Yes, ma'am. Do you want to say? It looks like this with a question. question. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to say food waste or do you want to say organics? So, uh, like, for instance, for you know, like paper towels or recyclable or compost food and food and, and organic waste. Food, 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 food and organic. Food and organic. Food and organic. Grass would be included. Yeah. Yard waste. Yeah, we found Yard we can't waste. from our own program. Yeah. We can't just say organics because people say. We had literally had people in our program participating who said, well, I couldn't find enough organic material that I bought at the store to, to recycle. 
because they're taking oh, okay. organic, oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. organic yeah. material yeah. and saying oh, that's no. what's <laughs> so there's some confusion now. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, there's, there's some confusion. Surprise. So food waste and organic looks really scale. well. Cool. What's um, organic? And we want to make sure at, at some point it has to be separated from yard waste. I mean, we don't we're not looking yeah. at developing Grass a curbside yard waste program collection program. Yeah, it's going to say. Well, well, it depends on what you should do. It's not curbs, it's, it's intermittent. Green okay. oh, yeah. Bay doesn't do it on a, they do it twice a year. Yeah, twice right. a year. And we have drop off sites, and those are different. Mm -hmm. um, and then 2021 would be a target date to get this, uh, get the pilot launch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'll start Craigslist and bands. <laughs> the, <laughs> and there are a couple potential funding sources, including the Recycling Partnership. And an organization called Refed, R E F E D. They are both Refed. Recycling Partnership gives out CARP grants. They've actually, oh, the, nice. the Valley, uh, the Fox River Valley, did, you know, App or Outlander County got a mm -hmm. grant from them to do curbside recycling carts. They, they paid the carts for the full of that area, which was great. And one of their main Jill Martin, who used to run out of Gaming County's Murph, is now one of their VPs of outreach and education or something like that. So we've got to tie in pretty good. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff out there that's, and I I have somebody working on this exact program right now, so that's even better. We're looking at moving our program forward. Cool. So I think this is hopefully pretty achievable. I have to talk to John a little bit more about potential other research that we might need at some point. And then we can move on to another aspect of it. No? Yeah, plastics. See, for me, it's frustrating because I'm the county. We don't do any collection at all, so I have these ideas about needing to do things, mm -hmm. actions, and the county doesn't. We, we collect. We, we're a receiver, but we don't do things. Mm -hmm. And now that you know, I have you guys to talk to, it's like, hey, <laughs> I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, pretty exciting stuff. Great, thank you. Anybody who feel Deb, I think Deb should be an eight point person partner with me because you, you have a really strong interest in composting too. Right? I see that article, I, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest right. challenge is finding a, a Milwaukee. That's what John and I, yeah. yeah but do you, Milwaukee's program is I, having, they can't, they, they can't, they don't have enough end um, uh, places. They, the company that they're working with, Compost Crusader, and then there's another one that actually they've been working with, don't have enough capacity to take. Uh, Milwaukee has like seven, eight hundred households that they're working with, and they, that's more than that overwhelms them mm -hmm. in terms of being able to manage that. Well, they should them. come to a smaller community. Well, yeah. we're still our our two hundred and fifty people who are participating is more than anybody around here can handle probably mm -hmm. because we're talking. Oh. The last year we did um, thirty two thousand pounds in drop off, so that's what are that seventeen tons. That's a lot of stuff. What mm -hmm. they have to end up doing is they can't compost in wintertime because you know, Johnny had that problem with your, right. your rocket, mm -hmm. uh, digester, compost, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right there. Institutional Wisconsin place. winters are too cold. After, mm -hmm. after you pilot. gave the presentation, there was a woman that on the radio, there was a whole story about this farm up north of here. Yep, I, we contacted and her. Uh, okay. Farmer Donna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but oh, okay. but, uh, it's, it's, it's a great idea, but actually. It, you know, right now um, we're working with Santa Max and UW Oshkosh and taking stuff down to there, and that's that that's a that's a viable solution. They actually can take it, but it's not a long-term solution because it's 60 miles away. She's in Cribbets. It's the same problem. She's 60 miles away. You know, it's so we're trying to find somebody local. Um, Claire Thompson, who's the director of the farmery, you know, she has a, a farm, but she's now home. Okay, that's not so bad. That's closer. That's 30 miles. There, there are, uh, we've been trying to reach out to some of the organic farmers, some of the farmers in this area, to see if there's somebody who would be able to take it on. Uh, there's going to be a big digester built across the street from the landfill we're building uh, mm -hmm. in Dynamic Energy. It's going to build one in the town of Wrightstown in uh, the next couple of years, whether they have the capacity to take some of this stuff or not. I don't it, that's that's actually the biggest issue with this kind of well, program. Well, if they're so going to be building it, now's now the time to get a hold of them and say, "Hey, make it big." Well, it's not. It's the technology involved. They're 
I look. At, I keep on looking at John because John's. You're you're more on the technology side, I think, than I am. You've, you've done more research on this. They they, they didn't present the details of their plan, but. Uh, but I think they're liquid. More. They're really catering to the farmers, the piping, the manure, and mm -hmm. yeah. that's yeah. going to be their feedstock. Yeah. Not not right. solids. Right. You know, Oshkosh is nice because that's it's crazy. basically a. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a basically a big indoor compost facility that, that handles dry, they call it a dry digester, because it, that's what it does, is it? It just takes it and composts it for 28 days and then they cycle it through. Wow. It's the only one like, it's, I think it's still the only one in North America, right? I think it, that's true. Wow. Yeah, that's true. We're not um, going to go another one. Who yeah. is, is joining yeah. the Sustainability <coughs> Commission? Um, works for Festival Foods and you know they have all this compost all this in, around the state and he said that um, speaking for him that they have gotten a few farmers to come and pick up stuff at sites and really gung-ho about it and it's working well until they can't make it the weather's bad or you know whatever mm -hmm. happens and there they sit with this pile of stuff ready to go mm -hmm. and so it has to be something that's I think the city yeah. has to be involved, or so I, I, you know, do, still you could get f the private and the uh, city working together to get this done. You know, something to help the farmers when it, the weather's bad, or I don't know, some kind of insurance or something. So to make it work, to help it. The the program right now that I know of that's working pretty well on a consistent basis is Stevens Point and Rising Sands. Organics is a farm, an organic farm over there. Uh, Kelly Abington is a recent graduate of UW Oshkosh, or at UW Stevens Point, um, and she part of, is part owner of that. But they basically bought a panel van and go around and pick up, kind of like Farmer Donna does. But they're right in, and they do it on a subscription basis within Stevens Point. So they're right there, and they're made, they're able to use that. But they're they're small, and you know, I talked to her last week about this. Um, Trying to trying to ramp it up to a whole city is hard. Mm -hmm. um, Festival Foods is working with Hilltopper Refuse in La Crosse, and Hilltopper is a private company in Holler, and that's that's where they're working on um, subscription service as well for curbside collection. And so it's not the city of La Crosse that's doing it; it's actually Hilltopper that's doing it in in on Alaska mm -hmm. and, and, uh, um, in, in that area. So there's it, there's some challenges on that end, but you know if you s find a way to spread the wealth around amongst a number of farmers, if you can prove that the material is the hardest part that we heard from Oshkosh, and part of the reason we had to drop all compostable plastics is because they don't they'd rather not actually have our residential material at all because there's so much contamination in it, too many plastics, and that's Madison's on its third pilot program. Because the first one was a complete bust because they just had way too many plastics. Second one wasn't too bad. The third one they're kind of holding off at the moment until um, they do a really thorough round of education with people who are participating. But it's a voluntary. They're taking. They're limiting the number of people who can participate in there. People are putting plastic in that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's a problem here too. They hire people to go through it. Pull out plastic bags. Yeah. And stuff. Mm -hmm. Plastic bags. Plastic bags are just ubiquitous in yeah. any, any garbage that's and thrown out. Diapers and I never put plastic. Stuff. You're am I am I doing something wrong? <laughs> you're, not putting, you're not putting plastic in. That's good. No, you're doing it right. That's <laughs> we don't Why want would you put plastic in? I don't get it. Well, even the compostable plastic is no longer. Right, right. We can't do it. Yeah, we yeah. put it in a paper bag. Well, and now with um, PFAs. Well, they made it. PFAs. You know, even. Fast food papers are subject, you know, there are organic farmers who won't take a lot of food waste right now because um, if they're, they want to be certified organic, they can't take any, you know, any kind of hamburger wrappers, which are paper, but they're coated with PFAs. If oh. they're, anything that doesn't, the paper that doesn't, the material doesn't soak through popcorn bags, pizza boxes, all have PFAs on them. Oh. And they're, it would, uh, prevent them from being certified organic and so they won't take a lot of the consumer food waste either because of that problem. Until we resolve, resolve that problem, there may not be a real good long-term solution. Nonetheless, we got to start someplace and this is, I think, the, 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 it's a fairly straightforward process at some point, you know, to get this involved. Are you looking at, like, 
I know like some grocery stores when the food's expired or whatever are having like homeless people or shelter or people who feed um Calls pantry and stuff. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. You know, reusing that food instead of it going into the trash. Are there That's kind of programs like that available or oh that yeah. you would look into? Uh, America uh, what's it called now? Feeding America. Feeding America mm -hmm. is one of the biggest ones in the state actually. They're on the they're they do really, really, really trying good to get hungry. things there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they do a lot of the other deal process. Of taking that food from yeah. the grocery stores. That's that how the joke <laughs> Yeah, there's actually a, a, a good Samaritan law that, that even if you were, you were, you know, you like a big banquet, you want to remember something. Yeah, it would do, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Good Samaritan's law? No. Um, all right, cool. Should we round it back up here? <laughs> yeah. 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 Please do. Yeah. Yeah. Randy started yeah. talking about pizza, and then I got all these <laughs> <practice. laughs> I do wonder, um, we talked about it last time with the waste management discussion, on a grand scale, right? On a grand scale, the thing that would change everything would be some kind of a cradle to cradle legislation, right? Yeah. And that's a, like a federal. But we can make recommendations to the state, so on and so on. Could that be something that we put in our actions is to develop a model cradle to cradle resolution? Extended producer responsibility laws. There's lots of examples of around the country, and some states have them state by state. So yeah, there are definitely models we could pull together and start advocating for. So that it's not, um, some of it is you'd want to get away, you, know, you can do it uh, industry specific. You know, in other words, if, you may, if you're a battery manufacturer, you have to take responsibility, or you can do it broadly and say, if you are a manufacturer selling a product in Wisconsin, so it's put instead of saying cradle <laughs> to cradle, then put, put together extended what again? Extended producer responsibility, EPR. Responsibility. Yeah. Look at um, British Columbia. They're probably the best example in North America for EPR laws. Okay. Okay. So it's like the law for tires. We pay a fee to recycle a tire, or you, or. The best one is, is car batteries, yeah. hands down. I saw a statistic just the other day, 99% of the recycling. 99, I, was, I would say 90, 95, but it's the, I think EPA it's the best. EPA just came out with their 2017 okay. waste study and yeah. it said 99%. Yeah. What are you so doing? They disassemble them, they recycle the plastic, they recycle the lead, they, mm -hmm. I don't know what they do with the acids in them, they drain it and reuse the acid probably. They've so reduced the need to mine for new lead mm -hmm. because they're recycling. Yeah. So much of it. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, huge success. Yeah, you can recycle more of them. We wouldn't have to mine it. Yeah. Right. They, there is actually, was, I, I, I was amazed, there's very little uh, bauxite mined in mm -hmm. There's basically the world supply of aluminum is out there and recycled. Mm -hmm. So would you say the British Columbia EPR law would be research or evidence? Yes. I do think we should be realistic about the legislature we do have right now and recommending bills that might not be. Um, this is the legislature that passed the Wisconsin e waste law. Do you think that it's a possible event? E waste, yeah. The one that required that bans electronics from being put in line for oh. manufacturers yeah. to set it. They have to set a target goal for, for recovery they have based on their sales. So if you sell 100,000 pounds of TVs, you have to collect a comparable amount or pay for recycling to a comparable amount. Mm -hmm. um, so there's never say never. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. If you don't start somewhere, I'm work I've got a, a draft paint recycling legislation mm -hmm. that we're trying to find some sponsorship for mm -hmm. uh, that would require all paint sold in the state of Wisconsin to have a between a quarter and $2 depending on the size of the container that would be required to be recycled. You could take it, basically you could pay when you buy it and then you take it back to the deposit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a deposit law. And then it goes to recycling. There's a couple companies that do pay recycling very effectively, so. Well, I just really want to be careful about, like when we did the PAH resolution asking them to like, pass that resolution, like that was, that was a feasible thing that's going to get voted on. And like if this is a feasible thing that could happen, I'm all for that, uh, but I think just 
like I see some city governments, you know, elsewhere in the state that are just constantly passing resolutions asking higher bodies to take action, and I don't think that's a really good use of our time. Um, I think things like developing a curbside program are things that we have power over and that we can spend our time doing and just like feel good like you guys should do this recommendations that aren't actually rooted in you know potential uh, action we should be cautious of because otherwise we'll just spend time working on the, that. The, the paint management legislation has support from industry cool so the uh, American mm -hmm. Coatings Association has actually drafted the legislation and passed it in both Minnesota and Illinois in our, I mean locally there's I think 12 states nationally that have passed this legislation. Cool. Um, and so they're supporting it. Um, the Association of Recyclers of Wisconsin, who I want to, is the one who drafted it. Actually, I drafted it. But, um, so, and there's, so there's pretty broad support that way. It's, and, and right now, um, we're trying to build support from Wisconsin manufacturers and companies. Okay, if you get their seal of approval, then yeah, we can move forward. Yeah, yeah. so I'll, I'll, I'll keep it. Okay, that's great. I think that might be more of a long term thing, just given the legislative calendar for this year. The last yeah. Senate floor date is going to be before our next commission meeting, and then they probably won't meet until after the elections in January. So, yeah, we'll get it. Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah, sounds about right. Cool. Anything else uh, to add to these goals, Mark? Not from my standpoint. Awesome. Any other thoughts uh, from folks before we move on to ecological restoration? Cool. I think Ned had some edits uh, there. All right. For ecological restoration, um, the, the goal, um, possible goal that I think could be included there would be to use public land to restore ecological communities, support sustainable urban agriculture, filter water entering our waterway, and support healthy recreation for our population. Um, last two parts. Um, so it was using public land to restore ecological communities, support sustainable urban agriculture, filter water entering our waterways, and support healthy recreation for our population. Okay. I've got a communication in for INS for Noble. <coughs> we did actually talk about that at the pollinator corner meeting last week um, and then I shared some of the ordinance stuff that we had worked on 10 years ago on <coughs> height and we can already grow to nine inches so it's a pretty liberal ordinance as those go nine inches <laughs> that doesn't sound very tall to me. As far as one flower I have is under that. No, as far as a lawn, you can grow your. Okay. No, you can. Yeah, but what about like native grasses? That's also addressed in the ordinance that we wrote. Okay. Yep, you can grow. You can do your whole yard in the native grasses, grasses and flowers. Right? Okay. Absolutely, anything except for between the sidewalk and the street. Yes. That still has to be turf grass. Yeah, the turf. But and it's my understanding that the plants have to be below three feet in height. Mm -hmm. As far as the city of Green Bay, I've been told and I haven't found it yet, but no. I'm told that our ordinance says that if you have what they call a native planting, I believe, you have to get um, like a certificate or certified or something along those lines in order to have one in well, that. You can voluntarily register. We set it up that way. Okay. Uh, you could voluntarily, nobody has, I don't think, but you can have native landscaping, like I said. And, and it can be it can be as high as you want it. I mean, the most native plants that you're going to grow or pollinators are going to be taller than three feet. So let's be really clear right. about what part of the yard we're talking about. Front and back, not the so, terrace. Right, not so the terrace. So you can have plants that are taller than three feet as part of a bed. Well, no mow may is really about a lawn, lawn. area. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. 
and of course, that's turf grass, which right. I'm not sure is attractive to pollinators. Right. It would be more of the early yeah. blooming flowers, like dandelions, that would provide some kind of nutrition for the early emergent bees. That would pretty much be it. It if would be your, your kind of weed flowers that right. grow in a turf lawn. Okay, so no more. That's May. the point of no more. Right. Yeah. Is to get those those early emerging bees. And Corey, what food. you're talking about is in the lawn area, plants need to be shorter than three feet. Mm. I, I've been told, <laughs> and again, I, I, I haven't seen it myself so. in the ordinance. No, it's in a different part of the city ordinance, okay. apparently, which states under, that. Maybe like under nuisance ordinance? Yeah, that's probably And I know it came about because mm -hmm. there was an issue going on in the city with a homeowner's property. It's, there was a lawsuit. <coughs> okay. And so that's when I was told about this three feet rule, which again, I haven't found for myself. Yeah, there, we never set a height limit. Of course, so the lawsuit was after your work then. Yes. The lawsuit happened in, within the last I'm four years. I'm quite certain it's still Okay. Was it was it Active. was it in the terrace that they were? No. 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 Is there a yard itself? Just so you know, this is going to be brought up in the code and <laughs> so yes. we can investigate yeah. it more fully at yeah. that point yeah. too yeah. if there's right. an issue. Yes. Thank you. That's a bad thing. <laughs> Thinking about it as well. <laughs> but I, yeah, I don't know. If, I, I don't believe our ordinance has been replaced. I. I just looked it up again last week. So. I agree. and But it could be in part of another code that yes. says something different. That would that. Exactly. Yes, yes, exactly. And that's, that's exactly yes. a what good example order. of the code audit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah, I definitely something to look into, see if there is a conflicting one. Because um, then a lot of us would be way out of that code, but it would still meet. That we passed. So, um, as far as the second column, then research or evidence for the ecological restoration, um, I think we would be looking for mapping data from the city parks department. So, yeah, there's definitely some. I feel like there for this. Well, there there is like a, an amazing amount of information potentially because you have some very that your goal was like incorporated several things. Mm -hmm. But um, I was trying to do some mapping in the green infrastructure planning effort to do the pollinator stuff too. So yeah. we should definitely try to actually make that happen. Cross pollinate that work? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I've been <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've been trying to figure, I've been trying to make that connection consistently. I'm not doing very well so far. So but we should, maybe we should talk about that. But then also, um, where this area is designated a like a for a pollution hotspot area, basically, it's called an area of concern, and uh, they <laughs> it's a one of forty three in the Great Lakes. Mm. Yep. Is that an EPA? Uh, yeah, an it's EPA a no. Concern. It's an international joint commission designation. It's an international binational yeah, agreement that. This is a really big problem area. <laughs> what area specifically? It's called an area of concern. But where is it? It's, uh, it's from the De Pere Dam Dang. all the way to Point Sable and across the bay from Long Tail Point. And it's oh, amazing. Wow. You, oh, wow. Okay, so the coordinator who's helping try to do all the restoration for this um, area would love to come and talk to this group. Um, and they also have just completed a wildlife habit and habitat. Um, assessment and um, project list for it there's a lot of in water projects but there goes a kilometer from the shoreline in words to um, so that is a huge resource for you I can like send you the the I project ideas it like the mapping goes way beyond what they yeah. I know you're gonna like huh yeah it's free She's been trying to get on this agenda for a while, actually. So, but she <coughs> writes, she writes very. Yes, yeah, she's been trying to get on the agenda. I don't. If she hasn't reached out to you, I can't control everybody. So there you go. She's from the DNR. So you you might have you might have gotten an email from her. It might have had a lot of jargon in it. 
if you search the term AOC, <laughs> you might find her email. <laughs> it's just going to be the congresswoman from New York. AOC is... Yeah, AOC. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you talk to the Wisconsin yeah. DNR, AOC okay. means a very <laughs> different yeah. thing. I got, I got an email the other day um, with AOC. So, our, this just so you know, this area has been designated since 1987, this yeah. issue. And it has right. to do with the PCBs and then right. the degradation, uh, wildlife and habitat degradation and um, eutrophication, so all the sediment and nutrients and mm -hmm. algae bones. So um, it's a, uh, uh, there's a lot of people working yeah. on the stuff, that, some the ecological components that mm -hmm. you talked about. Excellent. And then I would just, we should connect more on the mapping. For yeah. That. Because I think there's a, a transmission, there was a study done by the transmission company in this area looking at pollinator corridor mm -hmm. habitat. ATC. ATC. Yeah, ATC. So yeah, we, do we have that report? That's what we would like. Somebody on the corridor, I think, has worked with them on some of that, so I'll ask. So getting that as yeah. a resource would be, I think, a critical piece. Thank you. There's also, I was going to ask about stormwater data, so I think. But what, so that's in the water resources management category, so right. what do you? As far as how, and I think this goes into green infrastructure as well, mm -hmm. how does, you know, some of this is going to support both, right? So creating green infrastructure could support pollinators, could support mm -hmm. restoration, could support yes. the water bowl. So, so we should, we should talk. try to maybe have partners. Am I added to your point people then maybe? I think we I should. Think, I think I should probably should. online. I think we should have Corey too because you yes. were. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Julia, <laughs> Ned, and Corey will be the uh, point people. So I only have one goal. The, the one goal is it's pretty Action, huge. sorry. <laughs> one action. The one action, NOMO May resolution to encourage pollinators. Um, I would also put, um, and we'll talk about this in a few minutes, joining national efforts to access resources and best practices. For example, the Bee City thing from Xerxes, Xerxes Society. Um, What's that? I was going to say email to sell so I think maybe part of that action plan could be too then like getting your inventory of, of existing right? and partly I think connected mm -hmm. to what you're saying with the Yeah, I've seen stuff. some of their Bobby sent me their ma your map. Yeah. But it also has to do with park stuff. I right. Think, I think Taking good. inventory is definitely absolutely should be should be one of the goals by the end of the year. Getting that one done. of the actions. Sorry, one of the actions. Yeah, getting that done by the end of it. And then you've also talked about, yeah, about a inventory pollinator what? corridor? Oh, taking an inventory of actual sites. By pollinator sites? Right. Yes. Is Sorry. That what specifically pollinator have a friendly <laughs> not like um, habitat type not sites. Not community garden sites? Um, or like what is the inventory of? I was thinking more along the lines of the pollinator corridor for, okay. yes, pollinator landscaping. Um, and we, are we looking at public land, private, both? Both. both. Okay. So we have, yeah. Okay, I should just yes. No, you got some Thoughts. ideas. Yeah, we have. Um, we could f uh, potentially have a graduate student come to build something and then have students go around and actually do because we were going to do this for green infrastructure. So, but and so pollinator habitat could be part of like a GIS collector, and so this summer to go around yes. and actually start the inventory. And then we would need, we'd love, you know, to have like where a website, so a map that we could actually, mm -hmm. like that would be made public, and then it would be a baseline mm -hmm. for all the projects in the future, too. Mm -hmm. So yes. that'd be great. Yeah. And it would help with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as actions, we would also want to look at and possibly recommend action or ordinances uh, regarding the use of pesticides on public lands within the city limits. Just public? Start there, I yeah. suppose. Okay. I, mean, right. yeah. I don't think you can restrict private sure. property. I'm not sure how much. Why not? Coal tar seals. Uh, you really I want think to it's go fine starting. I, I think it's fine I starting. I would not tell public. my neighbor not to put stuff on his lawn. <laughs> So you know, if it, if it is, you know, we could research whether it's a public health concern or not. Because if it is, a, if it's a public health concern, yeah, then yes, right? Yeah. 
I think starting public is awesome. Schools, I know. parks. Schools, county land, city land, anything that's public land. Yeah. That, yeah. Our, that our citizens are using. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then setting, um, setting goals for completing the pollinator corridor, which originally we had intended to have no gaps of half a mile or more between areas. So completing that corridor. How big, yeah, how big does that have to be in between the gaps? Of the corridor from UW Green Bay to NWTC? Sorry? Or is the whole city the Anywhere corridor? within the city okay. at this point. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That, that it's throughout the city. But yeah, that's kind of like the eastern and western ends, right? <coughs> UWGB and, and NWTC. So you're talking just pesticides, not herbicides, right? And, and herbicides, yeah. Any kind of okay, any so herbicide, fungicide, pesticide, any kind of so chemical, uh, any kind of cosmetic chemical use. So fertilizers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know in Bear Creek to um, mitigate the invasive species. Right, and I'm not talking about ecological restoration. I think that okay. would be the exception. Okay. Yeah. If there's a public health concern, that you have to use some kind of chemical for some thing, or if there is an ecological restoration use for targeted spot spraying, but you know that's different than cosmetic use of chemicals. For fertilizers, compost. There you go. <laughs> well, there's a use. Depends on the fertilizer. Yeah. So, I mean, what you're using it for, and if there's a need for it, or if you're over fertilizing and those types of things. <laughs> hey, if it's getting ready to compost, let them over for a <laughs> um, And then, uh, let's see, looking toward the next column, the partners, we have the pollinator corridor working group, I think that's fine, and funding sources, we, the working group is going to start seeking donations. Oh, you have so many more. Funding options. And grants. I mean, there are grants and Yeah. Can I have a pie sale? Yeah. 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 Is that a pun that I'm not getting? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just getting hungry. <laughs> and I did, you know, I had started a, a grant document for us, so it would be nice to. I don't know if we could have more of a. I know there's this chart, but it would be nice to be able because some grants are going to overlap with mm -hmm. different categories. Mm -hmm. So, and it, I just put on like the deadlines and the description and what would need be needed. Just give me a minute to locate that. Okay, so we could build on that. Is my point? Some of the yeah. Time. Because then it, because it gives the you know I just put on there some of the key things like dates and whether it needs match or stuff and stuff like that. So we'd be like, oh, it's this time of year, the deadline. Mm -hmm. Is going to be in a few months. Which <laughs> we should. Sorry, I never thought. <laughs> um, just like maybe sponsorship, like sponsoring a garden, adapt a garden, or something like that, where people could maybe it's for a year or whatever. But yeah, start with a year, and if it grows on you, cool. Right. <laughs> you are growing. Um, at the end column for documents, <coughs> I I put we have some original like documents from the when we set up the pollinator corridor project. I don't know what other documents we, we have right now. But just some background on it. What's the date? Twenty eleven. No no. The target date? I'm sorry. Okay, the target date. Actions build time machine. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> twenty twenty for for most of this. This year? Yeah. Most of this can be done this year. I think completing projects might be push that out to twenty twenty five, you know. But actually just doing some of this mapping and you know, possible ordinance writing or, or prep work for that can be done this year. Anything else?
that's the non <coughs> um, ecological restoration piece. Awesome. Let's move on to community outreach then. <coughs> Deb, do you have some thoughts on this? Yeah, I'm just going to jump in. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, instead of engage people, let me, could, could I just start at the top with some bullets? And then if any of this isn't listed, we can keep that. But um, promoting sustainability goals. And then above that, I guess I would put introducing Green Bay Sustainability Commission to public and, I don't know, as a business consider public. Sustain the commission. Sus sustainability commission. Sustain the sustainability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be the first one. Okay, promoting sustainability goals. And then networking. Mm -hmm. Brainstorming ideas. Building community. Um, and then in addition, this could also be the, the neighborhood outreach that we had talked about. Mm -hmm. This could also be another bullet for because it's not really happening yet, but. Um, Can that be an action? Like something you're planning on doing? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. And a monthly coffee conversations. That's coming up this Monday, right? Yeah. Yeah. As as a as an act as a how was my as a goal or an action? That'd be more of an action, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure where, whatever column it was in, we'll keep it in that column. Actions. Yeah. Actions. Mm -hmm. And then um, I don't know. Cut, yep. Cut, cut. Love your input on this. I was meeting with, you know, occasionally business people in the area, and it was really interesting, and uh, like Santa Max and Schreiber, and mm -hmm. um, I, I would love to continue doing that if you think it's useful. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, but it, it, if it's a useful uh, way of using our time. Well, you've so been meeting with them. Is it a useful use of your time, do you oh, think? I loved it, but... <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a useful use I think it, gener I, I think it generates talking about these in real life terms, talking about mm -hmm. these goals and sustainability, and we need to be doing things at our company, and mm -hmm. here's what we are doing, and they, you know, engage. Yeah, well, you don't so think it's a waste, A couple extra, these are large, not small, South Bay Marina is doing great things. Yeah, the yeah. McDonald Industries, sure. but South Bay oh. Marina is doing great. I just met with them, and they're—I mean, they're a certified clean marina. Oh. Uh, they're reducing, trying to get rid of all their plastic mm -hmm. and converting other stuff, and um, and then we also have a local company they just taught me about called Marine Dynamics, and they actually design pond skimmers mm -hmm. uh, to take out plastic out of the water. So they oh test these gosh. devices at South Bay Marina. South Bay's mm -hmm. getting three of them, and they basically act like a pool filter where it sucks in water, and then they can take up the plastic and take it out of the marina area. But they also develop like boat-sized ones, and they're all over the country. And this is based right here. That's uh, on the east how, side. How small plastic are we talking about? Well, like plastic bottles and debris and stuff. Okay, so valuable. Yeah. It's for like, actually, I, I it would be a micro great, plastic. I don't know if the parks, if you're going to apply for that grant, for, the, I don't know, where were you working with them? We did, but not for in-water cleaning, it was more the shoreline, so okay. like the beach, beach grooming equipment, that Yeah, because they actually have a water one you can go through and like collect, a, I was like, this that's a really like a water-based like you know problem-solving industry company right here so right. yeah I wonder if it would be neat to like have a resource where people could share their information but like somebody's managing it you know like even things for the bell and run if somebody was interested and wanted to learn more about how their company or organization could event could be more green maybe but yeah, Dane County has sustained Dane, and yeah. like so, yeah. businesses Coffee can put that Coffee sticker Coffee. on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. on there. Yeah. Like, I don't know if that's something we want to think well, about. Well, that's what the like Coffee Talk is sort of generating. You know, people out are out coming together, and they are talking about waste issues. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, Schreiber, yeah, Schreiber, Schreiber was there, there and uh, Santa Max is coming, there. and um, all kinds of people talking and uh, about their issues at work. Like, um, Bill, what's that label? Maker, they have some. Oh, Belmark was there. Belmark, mm -hmm. and 
Um, so that and we're organizing it. Also, Cody mm -hmm. is a point person on uh, that. You can, if you could please add. To oh that. yes. That's so, um, so I don't know how big it's going to come, or but but it is. Big, it's that on little terms. Mm -hmm. Are you but what about like recognition so, or like sharing so the information that you're yes. learning? You know what I mean? Oh, oh, like I having see. it a place where all that information comes mm -hmm. together and people can access. Right. Are you, are, you, are you compiling this information when you're talking to these companies? Taking notes. <laughs> and then, so there's an invitation that goes out uh, once a month. Right. Yep. yep. And um, taking notes on what was discussed. And I guess we thought. I don't want to speak for you, John, but um, it would be kind of a more organic thing rather than top down, rather than telling them what we want, telling them about our goal. I mean, they know about our goals, but where they could network and work together and right. come up with solutions and share solutions. Um, not so much the Sustainability Commission is giving them information, um, but providing a platform for them to share information and take it from there. Yeah, and I think that that information that's shared could be compiled in some ways for people to access, you know, and... Um, and be shared with a lot of other, I mean, right. any other community or any other business, I mean... Mm -hmm. Right. It's, it's pretty light As so a far. resource. Yeah, yes. it's not real a lot of heavy information coming through just yet. We're, we're, um, but even like the talk just today about the bell and run, if somebody mm -hmm. could just take those bullet points and say, well, this is what they're aiming for, even if it's not achieved or whatever, just to kind of get those ideas mm -hmm. in one oh, place. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. so you yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, because, yeah. Or a spreadsheet or something. Or or something. Or something. I mean, how are we sharing? That's I question. think on our sustainability mm -hmm. web page, we could probably have resources for oh. businesses. Facebook yeah. page. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I mean, it's, it's extra idea. work for somebody what? to have to input but that information, not, but yeah, it's uh, bullet points. Yeah, you know, it could be these fairly are goals simple. goals, and this is what mm -hmm. we're doing. This is our contact information. If you'd like more information, yeah. Also, and so, okay, because maybe they're like, oh, we so you found aluminum water bottles for Jim Frey. <laughs> well, actually, that, 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 that was how they found that out. It, it was this discussion at the coffee talk with the Green Bay Botanical Garden, yeah. sharing yeah. that they were doing that. So that that was the, that was the conduit for them. Mm. So. Hmm. Hmm. Was it a conduit or a sluice? Um. Just a date. And oh, okay. I unfortunately, partners. Oh, the dates, yeah, the dates ongoing. I mean, ongoing. There's no end. Okay, end ongoing, date, right. Yeah. Infinity. Infinity. Okay. And beyond. And then there's just a little bit. Okay. All right. Yeah, so the next coffee talk is Monday. Monday. It's at 745, right? Uh-huh. Uh, 730. 730. Oh, 730. 730. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Cool. All right. Well, any other thoughts on this document uh, as a whole? Can, Can I add, add one me more to the waste? Yeah, no. I'm sorry. Could you do that, please? Just one real quick. Sure. Yeah. How about a pilot, green infrastructure pilot project? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. That would be great. That's awesome. Let's put that in. In uh, the water resources management action. Box. Okay. Cool. And then I guess like the major <laughs> significant changes. I'm gonna get really in general. There we go. From last time. Something. Uh, we did eliminate. I just took the, the liberty of eliminating the sustainable transportation option. We didn't really do anything last year on that, and we don't want to overcommit ourselves. And then um, we did have a discussion about the comprehensive planning and stuff too, but I just don't know where that is at, and if there's a meaningful way to to plug in. So I don't think we need goals around that at the moment. Yeah, I would say not. I would say um, so. Some of the people who are involved in the comprehensive plan attended the. Uh, community spoken workshop for green infrastructure, and um, I think that that team is, you know, putting sustainability in the comprehensive plan. And they're taking a slightly different approach to um, constructing it, so it's by neighborhood instead of by category. Cool. So mm. that's awesome. Yeah. 
Um, so I would just say, let's just leave that aside. And um, if you want to check back, then just put it on the agenda item for an update. Cool summer. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Move to um, adopt as amended. There's a motion to. Second. And the second, Ned and Randy. All those in favor, say aye. 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 One second. <laughs> Isn't planning fun? Yeah. I have one more big plan to do this week. <laughs> All righty. All right. Uh, motion by Ned, second by Randy. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. 2020 plan adopted. Still early March. All right, cool. Over that plan. What's that? That was really great to go over that plan. Yeah. I, I really Okay. Sometimes folks think so plans are I like one peak and I'm glad that it wasn't that <laughs> subject. I love that. <laughs> cool. All right. Moving on to our next item. Oh, I'm on the next item. Moving on to our next item then. Uh, field trip. <laughs> field trip. So, um, possible dates for us to take a tour of new water. Um, of course, you know, this. I got this and did this before. There were some um, social distancing moves by entities in our community. I have no idea if New Water is one of those entities that's going to do social distancing and thus cancel their tour. Oh, I have no idea. Corona. Oh, Corona. Oh. Oh. So, um, what I'd like to do, I, I wanted to put this on the agenda. I think probably the easiest way to handle this is for me to just email you mm -hmm. and see if you want to come. I mean, generally, are people interested in doing a tour yeah. of New Water? Would it be yeah. at their new, the new part of their stuff? I think I can get probably. whatever I want. Probably. <laughs> so, it's yeah, I think probably, yeah. Their R2E2? Yes. So. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I would just say the motion I would look for is just for us to um, <coughs> take necessary <Put> precautions. <laughs> I would say let's just table this into the next meeting. Okay. Well, um, we have, but that would be after. That would be after this time frame, but that's fine. Yeah, probably. that's right. Because okay. I'm not sure where they are. Sure. So, okay. so just hold for the next meeting. Hold for the next. Meeting. All right. Table. Motion to hold. Motion to hold by Randy. Seconds Second. by. Second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? All right. Hold one. Just give me one second. So it's just a hold on. Hold. 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 hold one. That's really interesting. Turn up your ad. I'm serious. <laughs> I didn't mean, uh, there was no fun. I don't not like that. Although my, they are getting better. <laughs> they are getting better. Okay. <laughs> so experience. All right. <laughs> item three. Ned, take it away. Ooh. Three. Oh. Okay. Oh, yes. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do it on one. Okay. I'm just going to show B, B, B. Yeah, the B city. Um, this was brought to my attention last week by um, one of the folks at the pollinated corridor working group. Um, Bee City is a program, you know, kind of like Tree City or Bird City that we've become part partners with um, to recognize efforts um, uh, that the city's taken to support pollinator habitat. And um, it has some requirements in it. So in your packet, um, it talks about uh, what we would commit to doing as a city, so I'll start there, I guess. Um, taking on the commitment of being assigned, or uh, assigning a B-City USA committee, I think that would fold right into the Pollinator Corridor Working Group. They could be the B-City USA committee. Um, planning some kind of pollinator event at least once a year, like a garden walk, uh, which several people who attend that working group work on planning garden walks, so that should be no problem. Um, reports, um, 
kind of provide a report of the actions that that we've done as a city over the course of the year and then um, you know whether that be like installing a new garden in a park or doing the mapping project or whatever it might be um, but reporting the work of what we've done and then the pollinator corridor working group would raise the funds to support being part of B-City, which is I th it's a significant amount of money, I think. It's $500 to apply to become a B-City and be recognized. And for that $500, um, B-City says that you have access to webinars and other educational resources. Um, is that a, an annual fee? Or is that it's an annual fee. Oh. Wow. Yeah. So when we talked, there's a lot of free information out there. Yeah, we <laughs> talked as a group, and it might be a if we don't see a benefit of doing it a second year, then we wouldn't. How much is five hundred dollars? I believe it. I think it's. I don't know if that's an annual. If it's five hundred dollars every year, but um, at least for the initial one, and. You know, it's, it's through the Xerces Society, which is a pretty well-established group that has been doing years and years worth of work in, in promoting pollinators, butterflies and bees, things like that. Um, so, if we think the uh, notoriety of being a bee city, you know, we'd get some, it would actually be stickers for signage. Um, being recognized kind of like the Bird City was and the Tree City has been. Um, basically, the benefits would be that recognition and that networking with other other B cities and access to some of the Xerces resources. Do you know that if, if we pay the 500, do we, um, would we meet the requirements to be labeled that or what's the effort to, to be labeled a B city? Right, uh, so the city would would have to have something in place as far as uh, like an ordinance relating to pollinators, which we already do. Mm -hmm. um, promoting and creating um, sustainable, like sustaining pollinator habitat. That is something that we'd have to do as a city. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just seeing if there's anything else. That's kind of the major stuff to do. Yeah, having something in an ordinance and having actual habitat created and maintained. So is this something maybe better after we reach our 2020 goal of having the pollinator corridor established or mapped or does it make sense to, to wait for a certain point or, or to go hand in hand or at the same time as these developments? Yeah, I don't see a problem with doing it now because we wouldn't apply until that $500 has been raised anyway. And there is work that's already been done by the city that would qualify us. And then continued work being done this year, and that could be the report out. Would be, you know, we spent 2020 mapping and looking for new sites, chasing grant money. So that Some of the statements in here under the background information said, I'm just looking at the last set of bullets in here, it says sustain, the Sustainability Committee commits to mm -hmm. promoting positive awareness and best management practices and creating and sustaining pollinator habitats. Okay. Supporting the recommendations brought forward by the pollinator working group as a result of the affiliation of BC and USA. What if we disagree? Um, I'll answer that. Um, Creating, maintaining, enhancing pollinator habitat on public and private land. So we as a sustainability committee are you're you are this this statement is committing us to doing that. So what was originally written was the city of Green Bay commits to and um, that is difficult for the city to commit to those actions. I'm not sure it's not difficult for the sustainability committee. I, I, I would agree that it would be difficult for the Sustainability Commission to, I that should say committee, sorry, yeah. um, commission, um, to commit to all of those as well. So, you yeah, know, who, who does what and what power do they have that 
is those last four bullet points. I changed it because I didn't want to commit the city. Because mm. what is this? I always ask that question. What's the city? Who's the city? Which part of the city? So. Right. I and I think, you know, this is obviously up for change and, um, you know, your edits as a commission. Um, and, you know, especially creating, maintaining, enhancing pollinator habitat on public and private land. The city couldn't do that anyway. Right. Private land couldn't do that. So, um, and the B art B city artwork uh, on city signs. I'm not sure about that either. I'm just not sure. Mm -hmm. so. Do we need to take action today? I mean, we do have to take action, but it could be double. Send it back to the working group. Is that who this did this come from? Right. Okay. So. Is this the application? No, this is not an application. I mean, this isn't the application. The, the application is online. But this is just some general information. Do you, think, you, think, it, do you think it's going to be helpful like for acquiring grant funding and things like that if, you know, if we're trying to um, create the pollinator corridor and it shows we're a bee city, I, I would think that it would be helpful, um, you know, to acquire funds. I think um, it would show a level of commitment, so probably, yeah. Right. See that. Like saying, okay, this is City Sustainability Commission is supportive of this, and so then perhaps the DNR or whoever has funding could be supportive of a project that enhances that type of thing. I guess I, that to me would be the biggest benefit, I think, of becoming a BC. You need to leverage it for some yeah. funding for projects? Yes. I, unless there's like, I don't know, because unless there's like specific grants that really value BC, like, does it have some pull? Otherwise, pollinators are pretty. I mean, just that word oh. alone is yeah. good, pretty good <laughs> in a lot of grants, you know, and that this sustainability, see this is, for me, the Sustainability Commission commit to wanting more, poly, through our work plan, mm -hmm. we're committing already, so we could already say that. Yeah, We are committed true. to this corridor. I mean, in the end, we could just be like, we're dedicated to developing this corridor or something. Right. I mean, I don't know if I think, these, I'm not convinced yet these cities ought, like, um, uh, the be all. The be all. <laughs> <laughs> the There's something in the air. <laughs> 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 My air is clean over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's <getting to> <laughs> down there. It's all clean air down on this. I guess I'm not convinced that we need this to do what we're doing and then uh, do what we're doing already. Yeah. Like, it's, uh, what is the added value really to having this and paying $500 a year for it? And, and what were you thinking about? I mean, you could take 500 bucks and go build how many gardens with that? Right. One really nice. <laughs> one really nice one, you know, and that's probably a bigger impact than well, being a B city. Pollinator quarter work through I think. Because yeah. people are, I think grants, the ones I know are more looking at like habitat and stuff, and yeah. I don't know if it, having a designation would be, I mean, we. The, if the, city, the sustainability commission is, and is actually work actively working, and it's incorporated in plans of the city, I think that's probably more valuable in a grant application than a designation. It might buy a uh, one-time media, you know, average, you know, basically like a news story. Yeah. Like Green Bay to the B city. Here's yeah. what that means, Not and then. It would be a way for us to market <coughs> some of our goals for what we do. But it would be better if it was timed with something like if you want people to put to do them in their yards and then put it in an inventory, like we have an online system where they can enter their own garden. Like it could be packaged like that. Where B City be a part of the B City and help us blah blah blah. So I'd think of bigger than just like that too, like how can you use it to leverage getting the public engaged in an even bigger way? 
and we're, maybe we don't have that infrastructure yet. Where were you thinking the 500 would come from? They wanted to start asking for donations on with some of their colleagues and people on campus and just fundraising just people them? that they know just just to start asking for donations basically on a very grassroots level. I think, so my understanding is the city of Appleton um, with their proposal for NOMO May was kind of sparked by the fact that they're a bee city and they're trying to, you know, meet both efforts, I guess, by doing that. Um, so I guess I could perhaps see that tying into if we did want to promote a NOMO May type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. But we should do that anyway, the NOMO May. Yeah, you can do it without being a bee city, but it was kind of from the way their resolution was written, you know, it says they're a bee city. And so it's just kind of more ammunition for the reason why you want to do what you want to do mm -hmm. as far as. But you could time it with such a bigger, I think you could do a lot now that you say that, that. you know, you'd be like, we are now, we're a bee city. This is, you could have like it yeah. timed at a certain time of the year and promoting Native, buying native plants and planning mm -hmm. out a garden, a workshop maybe about yeah. how to plan, go about planning right. and converting. So and I like think it could be a big deal, and then have, you know, it might take a while to raise that five hundred. So <laughs> why, like, if we're gonna do it, I think we should start allowing them to raise that money mm -hmm. because, especially because, of, like, kind of the college people, we kind of got April and May to do it, basically, with with. A busy campus. You know what I'm saying? No well, they're not mm. going to be there. Or, yeah. <laughs> they're not allowed <laughs> to talk. <laughs> 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 I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of phone calls and texts. Yeah. Okay, I was going to ask Bellin, you know, <laughs> <laughs> if they get any backup plan for the coronavirus. I, I mean, it's sure supposed to be better than one of those things. According to, but who? Yeah. I think um, um, it's a really cool <laughs> idea, and I know Keith kind of kinda takes away from the importance of sustainability and pollinator corridor and all that stuff. But kids could really get on board. I could see little kids getting really excited about we're a bee city, you know, and um, having teachers be able to <coughs> adjust their curriculum to bees and pollination and just creating a whole bunch of awareness on how important our food is. I agree. I, I, yeah, I think I it could be expensive. like this is one thing though that you could build like it's like what do you want and then we could build all this stuff around it and then it's part of that marketing like that day we are right. we are now yeah. designated to be city this is you know come join us and mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't dispute the potential value I, I think yeah. it does have value but I want to time it with something you know do is that the unveiling of the pollinator map I want to have something yeah. that people can go and and actually look at you know something tangible you know I, I think it's great but let's have something there for them on the unveiling other than hey we're now a city <laughs> okay well then maybe um, to to fundraise them and they got the funds we'd say before we do this we want to coordinate a whole mm -hmm. well, first yeah. we want the funds right then we can coordinate and then we can go forward so we should send it back to the working group with interest in it down the road. They can start fundraising. Well, does it take more than that to fundraise? I mean, do we have to make a greater commitment? I mean, do they really want to raise is funds if we're just saying we're interested? Is there a B-Day? <coughs> no, I mean, if we're thinking about doing it during growing season, we'd want to get it done by May or, or June, yeah. right, basically. And you can do a fall planting for natives, too, but... Um, or you could take a year and... But Raise the funds, plan it out like something that's big that's starting up next year, like integrated into more things like the schools or, you know, like how many schools could you get to adopt a plant a garden? Earth Day, yeah. 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 A year. Yeah. There's some, yeah. when you have enthusiasm from a volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For what? Yeah. For what? Do I don't want to take a year. To do what? Just becoming a bee city? And committing to doing some fundraising for it yeah. already. Like, I don't want to say yeah, do it a year. It. What's that? I guess if they're not doing it, then, right? Because it's them. Mm -hmm. Right. This means you're asking the Sustainability Commission for support for the application, not necessarily. I mean, that's 
when it comes down to it. It's, it's going to go forward with or without our support. There, uh, oh no! The Pollinator no, the, the, the city would still have to sign off on it, so it wouldn't go forward without our support. Does this have to go through council? Well, I mean, everything we do goes through council. All right, but they would have to sign off on being. They the would city. have to agree that yeah, we're going to use some city signage to advertise that we're a B city. That would kind of be the big thing. Okay, council all right. Would. All right, just wanna, wanna well, I, would, I think what's also important is um, the application. Mm -hmm. So the application. You know, no one is looking at it. So as you know, there's, I don't know if you're going to refer to the next meeting, but perhaps um, sending me the application so that I can forward it to everyone to look at might be helpful and answer some questions. Okay. So are you asking to hold this for a month and, and then look at the application in, be in between now and then? I don't know what everybody else, I'm just saying that maybe an application would. I mean, I'm not. Yeah. I agree I with that. Motions, I, I just don't. I'm not think I am clear what we're mm -hmm. being asked what for action on. The action would be to allow, like, the people from the pollinator corridor working group to apply no, on think behalf you, of the city. I, I think you mean what B City? No, no, what, no, no, what no, that, no. The organization. No, oh, you're talking. Okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. But the but. Oh. What, what stuck it with me was that this, this last part where you're, you're saying that the Sustainability Commission commits to doing these things. So we're committing, you know, by agreeing with at least this information that's here, we're committing ourselves to doing something that's laid out here. Um, and I guess that kind of circles back around to knowing more about what the outcomes of, these, of this process is. Um, are there other BCs around that we can? Season example. I think Appleton. Appleton. Appleton mm -hmm. yeah. Did they just become that though? I'm not sure what I did. So I'm sorry. So the action is that we are deciding on is whether to allow them to fundraise and apply. But if we're thinking, hey, we want to all look at the application before we allow people to apply for something, then but we should the probably hold the it for a month. Are they going to apply for us, or just their? Yeah. That's we, what we, I mean. we would Who's direct. The applicant? We yes. would direct. I mean, it would be us, but the working group. Of them. So the city is the applicant. Some some subset of the city is the applicant for B city, which would make sense. And <laughs> does it need a resolution from council? Do you know? Uh, I would imagine it probably would. We are committing city signage. You know, if nothing we else, we're committing that. And and like you said, and like you said, you know, creating, maintaining, and enhancing habitat on public and private land. What is that private land thing all about? That's that's kind of curious. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't be opposed to holding this for a month. Yeah. But yeah, could we see what the application, if they're going right. to do the application, can you come back to us with the app filled out application and then we can say whether, right. does that make more sense? Yeah. Right? Because uh, uh, we would be approving the application to move to council, is that probably yeah. so, I think so. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, then we can't do it. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe the motion would be um, to refer this to the Pollinator Quarter Working Group to fill out an application for our review before sending it on to council. So moved. Motion by Randy. Second by. Second. Was the by Deb. But he said some. Wait, um, who, who, uh... I'm, I'm, I made the motion. Randy came up with it all on his own. <laughs> <laughs> We're very proud of him. Good work. Uh, and Deb had the second. Oh, sorry. Gosh, darn. Clicky, clicky. All right. Okay. And maybe we could, in the meantime, ask Apple, and it doesn't have to be part of the motion, but ask Appleton how does that look as far as creating, maintaining, and enhancing pollinator habitat on private land? Like, really? On private land? That would be cool. All right, so 
All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Cool. Thank yeah. you for bringing that up. All right, we'll move on to item four. Court. Okay. <laughs> Park survey. Okay, so. Right. This looks funny. Unfortunately, when I put it in the packet, I don't know if it looks funny on your oh, as printed out, but it looked kind of funny when I when I looked at it as a PDF on the agenda. Yeah, it's a little bit of 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 the Parks Department, we're working on updating our Park Recreation Open Space Plan, which <laughs> is, <laughs> is something that we update every five years. Um, the document is really just to help us guide like the development that's happening in the parks, um, so we can kind of prioritize projects, things like that, um, as well as we look at rec the recreation end of things. Um, and then really, the document is a great resource for when we do go for grant funding from the DNR, and so I believe if you don't have a plan like this, you can't even apply for certain um, grants, so it's critical that we have it. Um, the last one was from 2014 to 2019, so it's outdated. Um, we're hoping to have kind of close to a final draft done by April 1st for the plan, um, so it's coming up soon. And. So we did a survey to um, put a survey out to the public just to try and get, gather information to see how they could, how we can en enhance our hand and kind of meet the needs of what people are looking for. And so um, the survey, we had 687 respondents, which we thought was great. They were mainly, um, it was, uh, uh, located on our website, we put it on our Facebook page, stuff like that, reached up to some of the user groups and neighborhood associations, things like that to let them know that it was out there. Um, so it closed, I don't know, sometime between the last time we met and <laughs> today, I forget exactly the day. Um, but it was great that we got so much feedback. And so I guess kind of getting back to the plan, really overall what's inside of the plan is the purpose for the plan. Um, we incorporate other plans into here that kind of um, complement our plan and what we're working towards. So for instance, the comprehensive plan, the Brown County bicycle and pedestrian plan update, things like that. So we try and tie those in. I'm thinking perhaps initiatives that the Sustainability Commission would bring forward could kind of be included in here as well. Um, so something to think about. We have our current mission statement, which is, we endeavor to enrich the quality of life of all people by creatively providing and enhancing leisure opportunities in green space. Um, we have some goals and objectives to that then we go into. Um, we look at kind of the city demographics, that type of stuff, uh, inventory of what we have in the parks as far as what amenities we have in each park or greenway. Um, we look at kind of a needs assessment and that's based on what the National Recreation and Park Association recommends as far as so however many people you have should have X amount of ball fields and you know kind of that type of information. Um, and so we then take that and see kind of where we are currently and look at an action plan. Um, we kind of have that broken out into categories. So for instance, we sort of have a paragraph about like our boating facilities, community gardens, um, disc golf, things like that. So we kind of generally talk about those things. And then we go into action by park. So each park or greenway has a recommendation in here for what we would like to see as far as development and things like that. Um, we do touch on maintenance just a little bit, but I kind of would like to see that expand as we're um, updating the plan. Um, and then we talk a little bit about funding too, and which mainly comes from grants, bonding, some fundraising, things like that. Um, so I guess kind of keeping in mind what's in the plan and then taking a look at the survey results. Um, so kind of try to summarize this so that <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to go through all the 
and there's a couple extra things in here that you weren't able to. Um, that I didn't share because it, it was with some sensitive. Does anybody have questions so far before we get into the survey and and what how that's working? Okay. You said I have. You said the funding was mostly by grants. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. The majority of the funding is probably from a fund. One percent. Well, but but grants, that. grants that. is a big portion of it as well. Yeah, beyond the funding, yes, it's probably the second source of funding. But if you don't have a comprehensive outdoor recreation yeah. plan, you're not eligible for DNR funding. Is what it comes down to. Is yes. Yeah, I've written a bunch of these things myself. So. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you have to. You tie it into what's called. Statewide comprehensive outdoor recreation plan to the score. Yes. They do that every 10 years or so. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's an important document for us, not only for the, getting the grants, but again, just to kind of help guide where we want to go over the next five years. And that in turn kind of um, helps us with figuring out our five year capital improvement plan and, you know, that type of thing. So. Um, as far as the survey results, we had over half the people said that they visited a park facility frequently, which I thought was wonderful. 36% um, said that they visited once in a while, which is still good, I think. And then um, the remainders were basically not at all or hardly ever. So um, it seems like that's 89% of respondents who frequent our facilities or go there you know, throughout the year, which is great. 66% um, of those people feel that it's extremely important to preserve natural areas and parks, which I think is wonderful. 31% um, <laughs> think it's very important, and that's 97% of people who think that um, yeah. preserving natural areas is important. So, um, and I guess just to throw this out there, just so you're aware, as far as our current staffing and resources right now, we have very little of both of those going towards um, that area. The majority of our staffing and funding and things like that right now is going towards like cutting turf grass and things like that and not necessarily um, invasive removal and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to make you aware of that. Uh, it's People mostly find out information about us through social media, so through our Facebook page, park website, stuff like that. Um, so you know, there are some who like will use the brochures and things like that, but 70% um, of people said that they would utilize a community center and its programming. So um, we do work with the school district quite a bit to kind of use some of their resources as far as, you know, gym time, stuff like that. Um, but we found the community thinks, you know, it would be a great resource, and so we're kind of starting to talk about it's, it hasn't really been mentioned in the plan much, and maybe kind of expanding upon that and exploring that more. 99% um, of people thought trees were an asset to the community, so that was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I saw that and I laughed because I missed that before. That's what I was thinking at. What? <laughs> yes, yeah. So. Which is great. I mean, can't argue that, right? It's probably the one percent who don't like to break their leaves. I don't know. Favorite parks: Bay Beach Amusement Park. Obviously, everybody you know loves their amusement park rides and just uh, with, uh, being along the bay and all of that is, I'm sure, a big part of what people like out there. Um, the next favorite park was Bear Creek Greenway. Um, the Wildlife Sanctuary, McCullough, Penisra are all next on the list, and in my mind, those are really surrounded by kind of natural areas and things like that, so it's kind of neat to see that people are really attracted to those places. And Aster. Yeah, Aster was a very close, uh, Penisra and Colburn and Aster were all yeah. very close as well. Do you think Smith, Ashwaubenon, actually means Red Smith? Could be. Like somebody typed in Smith. It could be. Well, that one is and I think next time we do this, um, we're going to mm -hmm. do a little more box checking just yeah. to keep things a little yeah, right. <laughs> more um, consistent and sure. easier to analyze. Sure. Um, I thought it was interesting, Packer Stadium is considered a park. Yeah. 
Well, people typed it in, right? Right. Yes. Oh, yeah. That was as a fill in the blank. Yeah. 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 I can see. Yeah, that probably would. I thought maybe you were thinking Green the baby. Oh yeah, the parking lot. So Johannesburg. It could. Yeah. It could have been Joanne's. Joanne's, yeah. Who knows? Right. You know how to autocorrect. Autocorrect. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um. So those are kind of you know the the big parts people like to visit. Yeah. The activities that people like to do. Um. At the top of the list was kind of a combination. I put them all together: walking, walking dogs, and hiking. All of those together, 354 people said that that was their favorite activity. And, and we had them rank them in order of like one to five, like one being their top favorite. But mm -hmm. this is just kind of a compilation of all sure. of those five answers. Is Pokemon going on? <laughs> it is. It <laughs> is it really? Yes. Cool. I think there's three. Sorry? Yeah. Pokemon, Pokemon Go. Three. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Parkour. <laughs> oh, there it is. If you would have asked that like two years ago, <laughs> there would have been more. <laughs> I was surprised to see down there. I hadn't even thought about that. But yeah, no, it was yeah, interesting like, to see. It, was so it, it honestly yeah. gets my five year old to ask for parking away too. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'd rather sit there. Because unfortunately, our ice <laughs> hasn't been <laughs> well due to weather in the parks. Go through Less and eliminate oh, really? sites in Lake Park because they were. People were they did, doing so much damage. Yeah, the park with the Pokemon. Pokemon. With Pokemon. Yeah, going, yeah. Well, going into the yeah, trail, not staying on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, their trails were getting so much use. Uh, people for That's while, great. They were, well, no, the, the people are depends. Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It, it is it's a Pokemon. Pokemon. Um. So again, favorite activities: so biking, mountain biking. We're second, you know, after the walking, hiking. Um, using playgrounds was next. I think obviously folks with younger kids, typically our playgrounds are um, catered to ages two to 12. So that's the target we're hitting there. Um, and then after that was swimming, 131 people. Hmm. Picnics was next. Cooking and grilling out was in there as well. And then um, 89 people said, Animal or nature viewing, bird watching, going to the zoo, wildlife sanctuary, viewing the wolves, that type of thing was mm -hmm. one of their favorite activities, which I thought was great. Cool. Um, favorite winter activities, sledding was at the top of the list. Unfortunately, Triangle Ski Hill was only open a handful of days mm -hmm. this year, just due to weather. Yeah. Um, so that's unfortunate. There's skiing was next on the list, snowshoeing. Walking and hiking again, fat tire biking is really kind of um, getting big in the area. And ice skating was next. And then the question about how many trails were used within the last year was the Fox River Trail was at the top of the list, the Bear Creek Trails were second, and then the East River Trail was third. Wow. So, sorry you didn't have all of this information prior to because I just compiled some of it today. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I guess, so with all of that being said, what I'm really looking for from the commission is kind of knowing what you know about the survey, knowing the little bit that you know about the plan and that type of thing. Is there any recommendations or um, suggestions you have for us as we're updating the plan? Sure. Replace turf grass with native vegetation. Native, where we can. And land, native yeah. landscaping. It's is less maintenance, so cost that you want to? I don't know. I, I think if we look at where the foot traffic happens, then we'll know where not to do it, right? Like, if we know where kids are playing on fields, that's yeah. not what we want to eliminate. We want to keep those fields. Right. This could be so like underutilized turf areas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Like, definitely. Because, I mean, it's less maintenance, so then you're talking about most of your money going towards maintenance of turf grass, too. So... That could help reduce costs. We could cut it. <laughs> Love to see some kind of, if you know, we know, I don't know if we have north, we don't have north, it's probably in, but on the spraying at parks. Internal decisions made that we're not going to cosmetically spray on our parks. And we don't spray our turf, for instance, I know, like, unless it's an athletic field for dandelions, which um, we used to do. 
Um, we do use herbicide to like kill the grass under the fence lines and to reduce mowing and things like that. Um, but sorry, what was your the idea would again? the idea would be anywhere that a child goes to play, we shouldn't okay. be spraying harmful chemicals. Even more adult. Or we're an adult, right, exactly, or an immunocompromised person, <coughs> like any, anyone, like, you know, city parks are going to have dandelions, and that's cool, like, kids can play with them, <laughs> right, I mean, I did it's not hurting anybody, kid. yeah. <laughs> um, so is it, I guess, herbicide in general that you're targeting, or, um, like, you know, we fertilize our athletic fields, and so is that a concern that kids are playing on? athletic fields that are fertilized now or no, no, but you almost have to don't you I mean you have I, to maintain, to maintain it you do yeah. I mean right I think you know we should look at the type of use and the type of chemicals that we're putting yeah and okay. you know is there an organic alternative is there a safer alternative if we are you know managing it for a specific use and we need to do whatever um, you're you know. maybe from like the public safe health perspective kind of looking at And then, you know, we have parks that people really don't like the corner of, of Baird and Mason that we've allowed us to put in a, an installation for native plants. Like, you know, could we expand some of that, right? And I think that that's what Julia's saying. And I agree with you 100%. I just know that um, right now with the resources we have, I'm being told that we don't have the staff to, who can manage those areas. So, like, often... I mean, I think you were involved with planting the garden or, um, and like go back to maintain it now. Mm -hmm. And we kind of have the same issues with our, even just the community gardens where you get people who are on board with the projects and they get it implemented, but then those people move away or, you right. know, things like that. And then, you know, the parks department is stuck with that responsibility, but with our other current responsibilities, it's difficult for us to do that. Right. And I think that's really the biggest pushback we're I've been getting as far as wanting to create these native plantings is the, the maintenance of it because yeah. it, it's and the um, staff who's knowledgeable enough to do it it's the horticulture industry in general is it's like nobody's wanting to be a part of it for some reason and so um, it's Having trained staff or being able to train staff, yes, we could probably do that. But it's just, it's very easy to train somebody in the morning to go out and mow the grass and now you don't right. have to worry about right. it. It's until next week when you have to mow it again. But right. <laughs> right. I wonder if we could get the botanical garden involved and get people to like kind of dot different. Well, yeah, do you, do you have friends, friends sure. groups? We, the two friends groups we have, one for the wildlife sanctuary and then one for Bay Beach Amusement Parks. And there's exclusive to those facilities. Right, and that's, yes, that's just one. I mean, yeah, I mean, come up with a friends for... Well, yeah, I know. I mean, I know, like, like say, my, my folks are in Milwaukee, and there's... Every park has a, a friends group that's working, it working towards maintaining some of those. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe neighborhood associations parks. might be able to get involved in yeah. So maybe bringing neighborhood associations in. And they have. I mean, Astor East River maintains some of the garden stuff in Astor Park. Um, okay. But again, sometimes neighborhoods go out of... Yeah, right, 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 right. But I mean, but yeah. this is like a. There's that's a lot. That's a lot of work too to try to get people to do those mm -hmm. things. I guess yeah. it would be nice to know, so like, what are the barriers for your staff? You know what, and then how could we address that? I, I feel like you might need, like, uh, thinking about the O and M part. Like, do we know exactly what it would? What is the ask actually? Like, it's easy to say we're all doing this right now, so there's no room. But what is the ask if we are gonna? to do it like how much would it cost how much would it save by doing like this amount of grass yes and that's I think if we can mm -hmm. if I can find resources and information uh -huh. that show so the benefits of converting like money wise and yeah you know um, and put together something that's like this is the trade off like here like that's something that it, yeah without the numbers it doesn't it's hard to somebody to imagine how you might shift resources right so yes, they might go as one barrier. of the actions under the ecological one is doing like a an O and M and cost analysis for yeah for I think this. that would be great because so. it's going to be hard to, to get people from 
doing things the way you've always done them because they're working now. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, you know. <coughs> yeah and you have the equipment and it's, it's in the budget, and so. But that's okay. what I meant with like the botanical gardens. Maybe you, if you could get a group like yeah. that to agree to manage, that not that they would actually, but you know, they'd organize and they'd get people to take care you of know, I mean, they go to the neighbor, neighbor associations and they, I mean, they. What yeah. she's kind of talking about though is green, this is a form of green infrastructure to yeah. some extent. Uh -huh. And like the O&M question is in every city and you know, so it might be, you know, it's not your staff at some point it's hired out staff who or whoever wherever it, it depends you know what I mean there's right. different ways but this is like a huge issue for every community trying to do these things is the O&M piece mm -hmm. so we could like do some research and figure out you know if that's you know just come up with like what does it look like to change this over how much does it cost to change it over right <laughs> <laughs> and then like what is it gonna take to maintain it yes because and then Oneida has um, they are doing this on one of their as like a pilot on one of their properties, okay. and they're and one of the reasons they are doing it is because it is supposed to be a lot less maintenance. So because you don't need our savings. Yeah, you don't have to mow it, right? <laughs> like, and you don't, you know. So, and not, there's that doesn't mean there's no maintenance, right? right. Just, but maybe we could build in. And it should be mowed or burned at some point, just as a because right. you get trees otherwise or whatever. If you're not, you got to manage it somehow. So yes. we'd have to look at what that would look like. You know, it's not just going to be volunteers coming in every year to pull stuff. It's going to be a, this is how our city manages it, right? Mm -hmm. Firefighters maybe could practice. Do, do they do that? Do they practice yeah, we have native? But I don't know. No. Prairies or, you know. Uh, they've done some burns. I feel like I've city. seen some. See, that's what I say. I'm not sure if it's they've done it. I was going to say they've done that, but I don't know if they've done it in the city. We have done they've, it. They've done it kind of like out by Ken Ewers out that way and stuff. Well, yeah, they, they did. Atkinson Marsh. And then, yeah, and Atkinson Marsh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know if they've done anything in the city, but maybe it'd be something to look at. We've done it, um, the city has done it around their stormwater management, <coughs> or stormwater ponds. Oh. Mm -hmm. I know like Mackenzie Lane, for instance, I believe it was, it was last spring, Fox Valley Technical College does do it at, mm -hmm. um, as part of their learning, you know, because so, they are training students to do it. Um, so I know that's available locally. I don't know how many they can burn in the air, but. <laughs> <laughs> Why you wouldn't have to burn all at the same time? But I mean, right. theoretically, if, if the city had enough area that needed burning, you could hire somebody to do that, you mm -hmm. know, who specializes yeah. in that or, um, Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. The only, sorry, the only situation. other one, I drive by the wildlife sanctuary and that grass between Bay Beach and the lagoons. <laughs> the lagoons, is that what you call them? Yes. Because <laughs> I'm like, that is like prime rest wa wetland habitat restoration opportunity right there. We agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then like an awesome boardwalk, an awesome boardwalk over to the, over to the wildlife sanctuary, connecting the two. Mm -hmm. So Bay Beach? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that like, are you plan? Plan? is that in your plans? Um. We, yes, <laughs> in the okay. long-term plans. <laughs> okay. It so is. you do, it, yeah, okay. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I thought you were assessing the, the like, the, that area as, as well on restoration already. I mean, they have so, I'm sorry, the amusement park side or the it's between it sanctuary side? It, it, the amusement park side. Okay. It's trees and then There's that open area. a lot of geese. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> we had a wetland delineation yeah, done there this past year, and that area is designated mm -hmm. wetland. Um, and we do have plans at some point to improve those wetlands to um, improve. improve them. Yeah, to so they function better and aesthetically. I think it would be a nice tie-in with what is happening across the street. So yes, we don't have any. Um, we're planning to do it. We don't have anything set in stone yet, ready to go, shovel ready. Although I may have a funding source, so we'll see. <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. One more thing on a different angle a little bit is um, when parks create more interest, like with educational signs, people can feel more pride, uh, maybe more likely to take care of their own community. What like more educational signs, that, okay. that history, Green Bay, you know, things that 
provide ground and depth. Mm -hmm. I don't know, hardship, history, not, you know, beauty, an unusual species, things like that. I know it's expensive, but. Yes, and I think really nice. the main concern with that too is the replacement of them. You know, it's, yeah, you can usually find the, the east funding east up front. East high. <laughs> pretty bad shape, I know. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, so sure. we tend to shy away from signage for that reason, just mm -hmm. because of the maintenance of it. Um, but I do think, especially if we are putting in like permeable pavers in a parking lot and, you know, things like that. It, and, and in high visibility areas where we get a lot of folks, we will see those types of things. It definitely makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? I'm not sure what type of motion we need to make or how <laughs> we how we use this information now um, to move forward. But receive and place on file, or oh. refer to staff. Oh well, yeah, I guess we do re make oh. recommendations. Yeah. So refer our recommendations to staff. Sure. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Motion by Ned, second by Randy to refer to staff. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, referred. On to the last item the on our agenda. Uh, so this is the letter. Wait, wait, it said uh, that. Okay. So this is the letter. This is basically just all the edits that uh, we discussed last time, and this is the final version. Yes. So it should be pretty much good to go. If the folks just want to take a look um, and see if anything stands out, and if not, approve as presented. Approve as presented. Give folks a minute to read through. Do we want, do we want a comma after greetings? Yeah, there's, there's I was going to ask that. Yeah, there's some little. I, I would say get rid of the comma after greetings and then the dash between clean and energy. Oh, hold on. But you know, at this point in the night, <laughs> add another I dash. I appreciate another hour to work. I think you put an there. exclamation point after greetings. Yeah. I want greetings! My, I want my <laughs> name in the caps. We have a thank you. I think it looks great. I think it's date. We should have a date. I'll get it. Uh-oh. Oh, I know. Wait, hold on. Oh, yes. Okay. And what else? Comma after greetings? Comma after greetings, and then the dash between clean and energy. I think it looks great. Clean though. energy. I thought that that was modifying infrastructure, so that's why I put a hyphen in there. Oh. Um, so it's clean energy, infrastructure, and solutions. Those are three separate things. No. No. But no. Just just clean energy is doesn't need to be hyphenated. I understand, but if it's, I thought it was modifying infrastructure. So she, it's clean, it is. It's clean energy and infrastructure, and then she's. I don't know. She's yes. really smart. Wow. Really? I would <laughs> that is a really <laughs> a deep dive. All right. <laughs> so it does modify infrastructure, but so what should I? I don't care. <laughs> Clean energy infrastructure is what you want. Yes. Yeah, so then there's. Oh, okay. <gasps> yeah. I didn't know that was. Can we put an Oxford comma after businesses, please, then above those bulleted lists? <laughs> I would feel good about that. I'm a big fan of the Oxford comma. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we can wax poetic about that, but let's see, where, yeah, where? Right, uh, we work with right above the bullets. We work with residents, comma, Oh, sure. Business. Comma and city departments, yeah. Can we just put a comma after everywhere? <laughs> 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 Join us. Uh, yes, yes or or we come I'd like to suggest yes. that we say preserve and enhance biodiversity, because I think we want to yes. expand on that. Okay, sure. Word. Okay. There changes, or should we approve as amended? Anything else? You can do better prepare the community for severe storms and flooding. 
rather than two separate bullets. Okay, sure. Nice. Oh. There we go. Get rid of the bullet. Save on name. Okay. Should we write please recycle at the bottom? Please recycle <laughs> this document. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should. Or this please, was please put it on recycling paper. Please pin to your refrigerator. <laughs> hey, that's pretty funny, actually. Be, give it a little levity. <laughs> Wait, what do you want me? Okay. Yeah, I know. What? Tell no, me what you want me to write. I was kidding. Sorry. You said, please recycle this document at the end. Actually, you could have a nice quote by Aldo Leopold. Do you have it with you? <laughs> <laughs> it's on the back of the. Code on it. <laughs> <laughs> it always <laughs> oh, it's not even a Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> See, oh, someone know. has one in their email. There you go. I knew this crowd would could come up with an. That's my email for you. It wasn't out. It was out. Only work for school. It is out. Only a whole week. Don't you know what I'm doing? The underline says, in the Harry Meyer room. RM six oh four. Oh yeah, that's mine. I have to do that. that. Stand for rum. Rum, I hope so. I can use it at this point. <laughs> this is it yeah, it says a thing is right when it tends to preserve the integrity, stability, yes. and beauty of the biotic community. It is wrong when it tends otherwise. Are you reading that that's awful email long. signature? Is that on the code audit? I like it. Please recycle no, this document. Is, <laughs> you type in Aldo Leopold and quotes come oh, that's up. All of his quotes come up. That's the quote yes. I have in my email I'm signature. Okay with that. I, yeah. I Although, if, if this goes in a, if it goes in the Neighbor Association newsletter, hopefully they recycle the whole thing. Yeah. That's the thing. So they should they actually do. have recycling on self everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. this, anyway. No, this right. document will self recycle itself. Yeah, this is all recycle. Yeah, this is all recycle. Self destruct. Choose. Okay. We're really getting punchy. Yes, we are. All right, cool. It's come so it's to the end. And we come to the end. And we come to the end. To adopt as amended. Yes. Okay, wait, wait. Mark motion. I second. By Randy. Did you make the motion and second? Oh, I missed no, Mark, 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 Mark. You can't, you can't do both. I don't think so. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion Not to adjourn. Right. Motion to adjourn. Wait. Well, we got the letter. Wait. Oh. Hold on. You <laughs> folks have to wait. <laughs> okay. Now. Motion to adjourn. You may adjourn. Did you want to add something to well, the last motion? Well, we have the letter. I don't know if it's to the last motion. But now the letter has to go out to the neighborhoods. Yes. Yeah, so but that's, that's already that's it. done. No, no, I thought we were waiting for the, the neighborhood association. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought, I thought we, we were, were putting their information on it. Oh, oh okay. okay. Uh, uh, I, got I, I just put my own email in there because I figured let's Great. get it out the door. Okay. okay, the last time we talked, we talked about waiting for the coordinator and having their contact. I think. So it's up to you. Okay. It's know, fine if, you, if people contact me and I can just Yeah. yeah no, that's fine. I just didn't want to yeah, I just didn't wanna, yeah, I just yep. didn't wanna yeah. so who people will be at home for a while, so yeah, they'll be able there to read go. their mail. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so are you saying we should get it out? Yes. Or yes. Or <laughs> my husband we should get it out. Okay, yes. then um Okay, who is who is adjourning? We did do wait, 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 hold on. Can I ask for an update on the resilience coordinator position? I didn't put on the agenda. Oh, okay. After. Talk about yeah. so later. I can talk to you after. Super. All right. Is there a motion to address? Yes. Uh, but I will. I will. Excuse me. I will put that on the next agenda. Thank you. Okay. okay. Second. So uh, Ned to sit. Uh, the initiative. Ned to adjourn. Who seconded? Second. Second. Nobody. Nobody. Yes. Nobody Deborah. seconded. Nobody. 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 Deborah no, did. Nobody oh, seconded. Right. No. no. Deborah did. I, I think that motion dies. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Right. Aye. All those opposed. There we go. All right. We are adjourned. <laughs> okay. Right. Randy, you made it to okay. 24 points. So